this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. That happens. What are you going to do, uh, you know? Uh, 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 oh, boy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Happy Hump Day. Ah, uh, it would be. The way. Everybody getting ready for uh, Halloween? What is that, tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, yes, it nice, is tomorrow. Huh? Wear your costume. Go what? out trick-or-treating. Well. Oh. Well. Well. My kid's not allowed to have a costume in school, so no school for my kid tomorrow. No oh. costume at all? Nope. Why? Well, Jimmy, some kids don't celebrate Halloween. Uh, Thus, then, no one's allowed to celebrate Halloween. God, that's irritating. It's, so it's, sick it's it. the. I mean, you know, it's one of our themes, and I, I, I hope we never let it go. It's always a little tiny piece of the minority that is controlling the majority. Because I mean, overwhelmingly, yeah, the school that my little kid goes to, he's only three. Yeah. Overwhelmingly, they celebrate Halloween. Of course. And I bet you there's probably not even a kid in the school now that doesn't celebrate Halloween, but it probably goes back a few years f- oh, yeah. when they did have a kid. Or and maybe that... they never had a kid, but they assume if they do get a kid, he's going to be, you know, hurt and but why the can't parents you... will be offended. Why can't you just figure that shit out? Why can't you, as a school, call uh, the parents and go, you know what? Maybe you, maybe you keep your little fuddy duddy kid home today, right? Because you know we got little... kids that want to celebrate Halloween. They want to come in with costumes. They want to like do a little trick or treating around the school. A little fun, have a little fun. So, well, you're a parent though. Have you said anything at the school? Hell no. So <laughs> it's you, like, nah, your parents I don't said get never speak out. up. You should speak up. I absolutely agree with you, and I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Mm. I haven't figured out how you know how to do that without being you know too vocal. Yeah, yeah. You might be surprised if you said it nicely. Hey, well, I'll everyone just rolls out. Probably call the cops, thinking it's like some school shooter. <laughs> right. Oh my God, he's he's complaining about it. in this environment. Everybody's just fucking on edge. Excuse me. I really think that the uh, Halloween costume ban is it's a little much, isn't it? Ah! And they're pulling fire alarms, calling the police. I absolutely will say something. Yeah. I just haven't yet. I feel. Yeah. My whole thinking is because there's a few little things that have happened already. Just little. I told you about uh, leader for the day, and they had to change yeah. it to host. So now my kid walks around my house saying he's a host. I'm like, no, you're a leader. I like Führer. Führer <laughs> would be nice. Führer for the day. Führer for the day. They give him little yeah. armbands. It's fun. So there's a couple little things. Yeah. No fucking peanuts. You can't even walk in the school eating a little like oh, peanuts. Oh hell no! They fucking panic. Peanuts like ricin. They're ready to like hit a button where like fucking uh, walls go down. Oh, you think it's to like trap yeah. the parrot that forgot and came in with a little, <laughs> with a little nut ch- treat. Yeah, and an out a guy comes in an outbreak suit. Right, takes the peanut with a pair of tweezers. I think my I think my thought is simple. I wanted like there to be some time, just a little yeah. time to settle in, and then I want to. Go have a little talk and really try to understand this shit. Because, I mean, I talked to the parents about it, and they're all like, yeah, man, can you believe no costumes for Halloween? Uh-huh. So they can have an empty classroom because, you know, Halloween is pretty fucking huge for little kids. Breaking news, I think they really enjoy it. Yeah. So, you know, by the time it gets out of school, you know, it gets dark at, what, 2.30 now? Uh-huh. <laughs> so you got to... You got to keep him out of school so he can do some trick or treating. You know, I haven't seen one positive aspect to diversity. I just haven't. No. I'm sorry. No. We I don't. I, I see. It's it's a very forced thing. I don't think a lot of people really like it. No one it's, likes it's, it. You're supposed to like it, um, but but it's basic human nature not to. And I don't see any. Po- Everyone's like, oh, this great diverse nation or this great diversity we have here. I don't see one positive aspect to diversity. 
period. Yeah, it's a little weird. Just don't. It seems like it's always a pain in the ass, something that has to be tolerated. Be tolerant of this. Why tolerate? Why make it sound like it's some great thing when all it is is an intrusion on you? It's a pain in the ass. It's something you have to tolerate and accept it's and all forced. this shit. I could, I could simplify it for you. Yes. It's, it's forced. They, they're forcing everyone to have tolerance. If it was something that came about naturally, then fine. It would be great for the country. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're just forcing people to do it, and it just gets everyone in a bad mood. Right. I mean, it, obviously of, not a popular thing to say. <laughs> well, no one else is saying it. I mean, no one. I think we're the only show that sees it the right way. Yes. For whatever reason, I guess because... Maybe satellite radio just doesn't have respect yet, so we're yeah. allowed to fucking babble our asses off. Yep. Eventually, some uh, people will come in here and start shutting us down a little bit. I, that, you know, I'm amazed the stuff we're allowed to say every day, and and we're, we never get a talking to. Yeah. And the same shit if you, if you said it on MSNBC, CNN, Fox, oh, uh, anywhere else, anywhere yeah. else, uh, yeah. all these sports talk shows, they shut you the fuck down. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, slow down. Yeah. Like the Dexter Manley thing. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a hot topic. That's, oh, that's becoming yeah. hot. The, the guy was hilarious. Yep. I'm sorry. It was funny. Just goofing about Troikman. 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 Troikman's a queer. <laughs> and, and, you know, all of a sudden they're going to ban him from, any, from uh -huh. everything. And there's a guy that likes, you know, he's a funny personality. Mm-hmm. I think diversity is a problem. I think it's the way people handle diversity. Like they don't know how to just be themselves around other. Like well, we've always yeah. been diverse. Like there's always been yeah, but we're millions now, of no. There's this. But now we're trying to push it forward like drastically is the problem. Diversity isn't a problem when you have people from different places that assimilate to a certain uh, way of life and a certain thinking. There has to be a certain mindset when you come to this country. And, and there had been for many years. But now diversity seems to be this intrusion on everyone else's. You know, it could be diverse, but there's like 10 different types of groups. One group will, will intrude upon everyone else. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then someone in that group will intrude upon mm -hmm. everyone else. Because they want this sacred fucking right to be their own people in the greater community, which just fucking undermines the entire community. Well, then the greater community, it's the fault again like, of the greater community for not going, no, 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 we understand you, you speak this language, but English is the main, or whatever the issue is. Right. Yeah. It's the fault of the greater community for not saying, well, this is the way we oh, would like it's been said, and then people not... come out of the woodwork. Try to tell people they, they mm. need to uh, be proficient, or at least uh, uh, speak English uh, properly. Uh, in this country, you're called a racist. You're called a xenophobe. You're called everything that, that it, because you're you're saying that maybe you should assimilate more to this country. Well, the majority's got to speak up a lot more because even in yeah. even in the, my my little environment, this little school thing that I talk mm -hmm. about from time to time, all the parents are like, "What the fuck?" But just like myself, I'm I'm to blame too. No one is speaking up about it. Uh huh. Well, yeah. we probably should all get together and go, look, let's get together and talk and, and go, what is going on here? Yeah. We, this, want, we it, want our kid to be the leader for the, the day, leader. not the host. Let him be the leader. Because I think it's okay to give every kid an opportunity to, to be a leader to at something. To feel like he's the one that's in charge or responsible or has, yeah, yeah, been the given, host. A, given <laughs> a duty. <laughs> oh, my God. When you look at uh, uh, the, even the word melting pot, you know? melting pot you put it in it melts all together as something mm -hmm. as one unit now it's a melting pot with no heat put on it it's just a bunch of shit poured in a fucking pot right. that, that nothing blends together uh, anymore and let's let's be honest if you put too much shit in a pot and oh. melt it down it tastes horrible Terrible. horrible <laughs> what do you want melt everything in there you no. ever bartend and you try to f figure out oh. a new drink and you put a whole bunch of things together that never works out this never, country has turned into a bar rag ashtray shot <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> it is terrible. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what the problem is. It's yeah, not. It's yeah. not like because the, the, the diverse groups don't matter. It's the fact that nobody is fucking. Uh, everyone just goes, oh, okay, okay, okay. Like nobody knows how to tell a group no. Right. That's no. stupid. Well, I'm no. hoping. I'm hoping. You know, these things hit the the press, and then and you hope that this is the one. Like Barney's. Yeah. 
Barney's has apologized. Oh, God. Did you see uh, that guy being held hostage with Reverend Al yesterday? Uh, did you see the pictures of him? Of course. The CEO of Barney's is sitting in a chair. And he has to deal with Reverend Al's scowl. Surrounded by black people. Right. With Reverend Al, with his arms folded, scowling at this you gentleman. Ne you never want to be surrounded by black people. Oh, <laughs> never. <laughs> never. And, especially when the news cameras are rolling. Never. Um, because it's yeah. not just... Because yeah. Reverend Al has to really play it and have that stupid oh, yeah. scowl. Gal of his. He was They're never giving you an award. Right. No. You're surrounded. <laughs> right. <laughs> look at this. Look, look, look at, at Reverend Al's like, mm. he's look. making a Michaela Maroney uh, face at the, at the uh, fucking Olympics. And it's all body language. Look, Reverend Al has yes. to have his arms folded. Mm. Yeah, that that says something, obviously. And this poor fucking white guy from Barney is just like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not head nothing. Well, now we hope that the Barney's guy hangs in there. Every day we have one of these. So this is the latest one. And I'm telling you right now, without fucking Jay-Z, Reverend Al, you don't got shit. Dude. You don't I, got shit. Yeah. You need Jay-Z to pull his shit out of Barney's or you have nothing. They, he ain't going to So do go it. march off into the sunset because if you don't get Jay-Z on your side, he ain't gonna this is a complete it. waste of time. Do you know what that picture looked like yesterday? Uh, when I first looked at it, the first thing I thought of was fucking Captain Phillips, the boat movie. <laughs> there's the poor, there's the poor hostage. Yep. And and he he's, doesn't know what to do with himself. He's the latest. <laughs> and you know, Reverend Al's not a, a, as impressive with the scowl and the arms folded now that he weighs 117 pounds. I know. With his... When he was a big fat fuck with a fucking license plate around his neck. Oh yeah. That was a lot scarier. Yep. Al Sharpton. What does it say? He uh, defends Jay Z amid Barney's racism. See, of course. Yeah. He defends Jay. Of course, he defends Jay Z, because Reverend Al will always see just one color. It's all about the money, and that's yeah. the problem I have with Reverend Al. Because if that's a white rap guy uh -huh. that has his shit in Barney's, Reverend Al is not defending him. No. Period. How and we all know him? that. What did he say about how did he defend him? What did he say? He just said this is oh, not about... Oh, what's that? He said this is not about Jay-Z, it's about Barney's. Oh, okay, so if people want to still invest and support Barney's... Because well, like he how, wants to go to Jay-Z's parties. I like how uh, Reverend Al is calling for a boycott of Barney's, but isn't that what Barney's wanted? No black people in their store? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's like, what are they doing? <laughs> uh, uh, God damn it. <laughs> fucking hilarious. That's very funny. Reverend Al should just encourage black people right. to go shop. Yeah, right. that, that, would be, that would annoy them. That would really annoy them. <laughs> oh, man. That's really funny. <laughs> like, oh, our plan worked. But look, we're to a point where, you know, something got fucked up over there. Barney's, I don't know exactly what, because the CEO is blaming the NYPD. The NYPD is blaming the CEO. Yep. So they're going back and forth a little bit. But I know this much. Barney's apologized. Yeah. So that should be the fucking end of it. And they're looking into it Think to make sure this doesn't it? happen anymore. No, of course not, because yeah. it's never the, the end of it. We all know that now. The I apology. demand a Reverend Al section. You demand an apology and that everyone gets fired. That's how this always works out in the end. Yeah. So until some people get bottle. fired, Reverend Al is going to be a, a fucking pain in the ass. Oh, yeah, that's what he the, does. To Barney's. And that's for some job. reason, we have to put up with what Reverend Al does. Yeah, because mm -hmm. why would the cops just stop you walking? Like, how would they know you yeah, even, even know? There? It doesn't make Someone sense. Someone called. Yeah. Someone called and said, hey, uh, this guy just bought something very expensive. Um, I think he might have a stolen credit card or something. And uh, the cops checked it out. It, cops just don't, you know poke around like that it's not really a stop and frisk moment yeah and, and macy's too they're, they're getting off because macy's. barney's is higher end yeah and jay-z's tied in with barney's but macy's is kind of getting a free pass the treme actor is suing them for a lot of money they put him in cuffs but that's all you yeah. need to know about Reverend Al. that he's defending jay-z he would not defend jay-z if he was white and again in a new york city store not that you could you could argue the um ethical and constitutional uh, rights that people have, but uh, when you look at loss prevention uh, statistics in New York City, a majority of the the loss um, is going to be chalked up by uh, black people. So it's very difficult to say, well, you know, uh, of course we'll be suspect. And how many other people are are actually buying stuff in there without with with nary a problem? You know, when you think about it. So one or two people get the uh, brunt of um, of w what happens on a 
Mm. On a daily basis in some of these stores, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I've, that's one where it's like you hear too many. St this is where black guys will go. You just don't understand. Yeah. And uh, I literally would love to go around in blackface and see what like the guy who Ooh. did that thing called Black Like Me, that book. Right. Yeah. Like I'm curious because maybe that's well, just something that we don't have to deal with. Yeah, um, yeah. But they say like even guys I know who are not. They're like, you just don't, what, how annoying that is when you're walking in and you're literally doing nothing. Yeah, because wrong it, if it happens, I mean, you know, in our lives, it might happen to us once. Right. Maybe. Right. <laughs> and, and it pisses you right the fuck it's off. It's really so. frustrating and annoying, yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, you know. But, I mean, the point here is that Barney's has done enough. And that should be it. But you watch how Reverend Al just keeps pushing and pushing. And oh, he'll want some type of, you know, guarantees and some fucking law. And certain hiring practices. Right, or... right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He'll want sensitivity training for all the employees and all that happy horse shit that all comes back to what we originally started talking about this morning, which is... Um, Diversity and 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 all this political correct I bullshit. I don't think you could teach diversity. You can't. You can't. Maybe a, maybe a little bit. Maybe, maybe. Do you think it's basic human nature, overall, for people to want to be with people of their own kind for the most part? I think it's basic human nature. And if you look at the way people socialize, I think you see that a lot. I think I think you're pretty accurate. I think so. So it's tribal. This, it's it tribal is tribal. From when it's we were, very, but, very primal thing. But I think it's also financial too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finance comes into it. Yeah, I think there is a lot of like probably nature versus nurture thing, even where that where that's concerned, where people just feel safer um, in in a primal way, in an animal like way, with people of their own ilk uh, than they do uh, strangers. Strangers. And people I, that are different always conjured up fear in, in people. I think eventually, yeah. Let, I'll just talk about America. I think eventually everyone will get a, kind of get along way better. You think? But the problem is we're trying to push that pu push that forward yeah. drastically instead of letting it happen naturally like you're talking you about. You can't legislate things Let like Let it be a natural evolution acceptance. of the yeah. people. Mm -hmm. You know, as we s slowly break down, you know, barriers and walls and yeah, this and yeah. that. But you can't push it forward like we're trying to do. It's not working. It even works with the sex thing because, like, a woman in the in the workplace, uh, they legislate against any type of sexual harassment. That you can't legislate against a guy looking at a, a woman's tits or ass or thinking she's attractive. That's that's something that won't go away. And and when women talk about things like, you know, we don't want to be looked at as a sex symbol. No, you don't want it to come out verbally or or you know, between two guys talking or overhear something or or see something that was left in someone's cubicle because you can't make it stop. It's not going to stop. And it's the same thing with wow. race. Wow, you make It's it the same thing with, you know, uh uh Religion? You make a really good point there. I think every single human being, mm -hmm. without exception, wants to be looked at as a sex symbol. Probably, yeah. yeah. So if, if yeah. you know, when, when so, uh, whatever, I was going to talk about, you know. When uh, some skirt? I was going to no. I mean, when someone <laughs> says something about m myself, it mm -hmm. makes me feel, I'm like, whoa, okay. Everyone likes yeah, it. You got to be used to it by now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be careful about what I'm saying. But. I think even women, man, that when they could go to work with their cleavage hanging out and their short skirts and their ass popped up, yep, they w they want guys and and maybe if they're into women, whatever, you know, gawking, going, oh damn, Don't, look at yeah. that, and they feel yep. good, like, yeah, see, I I still got it, and and people find me sexy and sexual. Don't you think that gives somebody a feeling of of power, and then? If someone uh, uses that and and you feel you're being sexually harassed, that gives you even more power. I just want to clarify for the audience, yes. if they're listening, that this is is not 1957. We are in 2013. <laughs> I just wanted people to know that they had it. Unfortunately, <laughs> but Ann made a really good point there. Like everyone wants that, but as soon as you vocalize that, right, then there's a then issue. you're fucked. And obviously, you can't you know say something over the top ridiculous. Yeah, but even if yeah. you say. You, you kind of said it, even if it's just a subtle little thing dumb now. thing. You might even go, oh, well, I, I like your uh, dress today. That yeah. could be enough to get you in the HR office. And now. in the 50s, it was like you would have had to, have, you know, get get up here on my lap and take some dictation. I think as long as you're not showing skin, meaning your, your own yeah. dick, back in the day, you're all right. Anything yeah, yeah. else goes.
Yeah, but the reason we have, and this, believe me, I get annoyed at it too, but the reason mm. we have stuff like forced diversity and all that shit is because it wasn't done voluntarily. And, and I agree with you about it, it's natural to want to be with your own people because we're scared. Uh -huh. But it's also natural to club people over the head. We're, I mean, we're apes. It's natural yeah, to yeah. fucking to just take pussy. It's natural right. to shit in public. Thank you. All these things are a learned just behavior -Rock. that we. Just the expressway. <laughs> but you know <laughs> what I mean. Dump. You know, when you live in a, yeah. a civilized or a comfortable place, it's just a lot of what's natural has to be mm -hmm. overridden, kind of. And it's you know, it's just the speed it's we irrational. want. It, it's just the speed we want it to happen. That's it's, true, but that and that's the the problem because you can't legislate the way people feel. Mm -hmm. You can't legislate against uh, prejudice. You can't right. legislate against sexist absolutely uh, thoughts. Um, so that's what makes the conflict because people are still feeling that they're still thinking that it's like oh we want to be respected. Well. You can't make someone respect you. You can't make someone like you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just the way it is. And I think there's that that phoniness that comes with, you know, uh, pushing it on people that uh, is so annoying. Yeah. But stuff like what happens is if it wasn't, uh, you can't legislate the emotions and the feelings. Mm -hmm. But you, you can only you can legislate penalties for not behaving a certain oh, exactly. way. Exactly, absolutely, and that and that's why there's more diversity in the workplace. And I'm not I'm not saying it's a bad thing in that respect. But you're not going to make people like other people, right. want to work with other people, um, w w not look at a woman's fucking tits or ass when she walks by. Uh, you know, it, so so the whole thing is, is it, in essence, a lie. But th then every woman should go to work in a potato sack. Oh, sexy. But I'm serious. I mean, you yes. see these. We and see I'll it here. i put my potatoes in there. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we see it here with how some of the women dress. Uh-huh. But man, yeah. they're trying to be sexual. But if you say anything that is mm -hmm. sexual, you're fucked. And everyone's petrified. You know, like everyone knows not to say anything anymore. Yeah. You don't. You, you don't. It's not like the old days. Where fucking some girls walking down the hall and you go, "Woo!" Not that would get you fucked right there. Right. Look, and, and everyone knows that. Look, man, cleavage. You know. Creates boners, period. Cleavage creates boners. <laughs> it just does. That's that's great. But it does. <laughs> of course it does. But we're not allowed to, you know, show any sign that maybe that was some kind of, uh, you know, a natural no. turn on to the man. Yeah. It's, if, it's, it's unbelievable. If companies had fired people who really were being shitty about it, they probably would. We wouldn't be in this place. You know what? No, that's what. But it's giant. It's all lawsuits. It's all because mm -hmm. companies allowed a fucking a, a guy who was doing it, who was actually a good worker, to continue to stay even after he had a terrible history of harassing women. Mm -hmm. So all that, and that's why women are winning all these money in these lawsuits. So had that not happened, had companies done the right thing and fucking fired guys who were truly scumbags, we probably wouldn't be in this place. Had fucking schools not been forced. By the mil with, 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 what, with what, the National Guard yeah. to let certain other citizens into them mm -hmm. in this great place of diversity, we probably wouldn't have diversity forced down our throats. But because every time it's happened, it's had to be uh, uh, forced and through the courts, you, you build up that, uh, I guess, that, that pattern of behavior where it has to be forced or it has to be legislated. Mm -hmm. When well, was it done voluntarily? I, I, I understand all that. It's just I, don't, I still don't see the upside to it. Uh, I mean, maybe way down the line in the future, there'll be some weird cosmic upside to it. But it just seems to me that every word that goes along with diversity yeah. is this negative thing. Of course. Where, where it must be tolerated. You know, we have need tolerance, acceptance. These are things that people don't want to do. Those are nice words, you, though. What do no, you think no. Those, those, tol it, except to tolerate nice word. something is tolerate. not to like it. You don't like it. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't. You, you don't, have to tolerate yeah, it. Yeah, it must be tolerated. Like it was Brussels sprouts for us. We had to tolerate yeah. eating Brussels sprouts. Yeah, no one really thinks that when it's like, we need to show tolerance with this or that or the other thing. No one really looks at the word. The word isn't something that people want to do. Tolerate is a horrible word. Oh, I tolerate it. Right. Nah. We were forced to eat shit growing up, and, you know, we had to tolerate it. Yeah. By the way, remember when I said everyone wants to be looked at sexually? I, f I forgot uh -huh. one group of people, oh, you know, oh, and we got one on the line. Uh-oh. Uh, Lexi in Maryland. Lexi. Hey, guys. How are you? Hello. Hey. Hi. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a business professional. I have an MBA. And, you know, I'm trying to be looked at as a... In the NB NBA. You want to be what looked at? I want to be looked at as a colleague. I don't want to be looked at as a sexual being. And you also have to remember, people have different histories. 
I was sexually abused as a child. If you look at Ooh. me as a <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, Lexi. What, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Something happened. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I love the apology. Yes. Now, what, what were you saying? You don't want, you were uh, sexually abused as a child, so obviously you don't want to be looked at sexually. Exactly, because it causes a trigger for me. And you have to remember, one in four trigger. girls are sexually abused by the time they're 18. We'll get those stats up. I'm sorry. One in four girls are sexually abused by the age of 18. But Lexi raises a good point. I'm not a woman, but you think of some female lawyer in court wants people, like, looking at her, t like, you know, or, or wherever you are. Like, it's got to be irritating there is, after a it's while. It's basic okay. human nature to want to be looked at as an attractive person. Being. Absolutely. Right? Like but, Lexi. But Lexi. let me ask. Let me ask. Okay. Maybe you're on the same path. Yeah. Lexi, so now we understand your history. How do you go to work then? You must dress really, really conservative. Suit of armor. <laughs> No, no, I don't dress conservatively. I dress in clothes that appropriately fit my body. However, I'm not at work to be leered at. I, I'm not, you know, I don't walk out of the house. To be yeah, but if you at. have like a tight skirt on and you're or you're showing a little cleavage, you know, I mean, guys can't ha that. We can't help ourselves. That's that's attr attractive to us. I understand. That. So you are going to be looked at sexually. Maybe right. uh, people aren't going to verbalize that, but it yes. ab absolutely is happening around you. Mm-hmm. I understand. I just wanted to clarify that not everybody wants to be looked at sexually. I do not want to be looked at sexually. Fair because enough. Of my, because of my history. But, Lexi, do, do you you want to be looked at as, uh, wow, that that's an attractive woman? Don't. I, I think I take care of myself. I think that I'm, I'm very presentable. And, I mean, everybody wants to be presentable. Right. right? Does, but doesn't it doesn't it feel good that somebody would look at you regardless a man a woman a, a child anyway would look at you and think that uh you're 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 handsome or or pretty or or you know w w don't you want that isn't that a basic human thing? I think that we all strive for that that we all strive to put on our best Right. Face. That's sort of what we're saying. However, however Whenever you're saying that everybody wants to be looked at sexually, that is not true. Well, uh, guys are looking at women, but no, you're saying not every woman I, wants to be looked at sexually. My mistake was saying yeah. every single person, but uh, the majority of people certainly want to be looked at sexually. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, we all do. Yeah. But how do you feel? Hold, hold on, Alexi. Opie Op and I go to the same gym. How do you feel like when that creepy guy is around? Mm. Do you feel sexy when he looks at yeah. you? Like, but, no, no, but you know what I'm saying? I got a vibe but, from those guys in the gym. I'm like, ugh. But really? It makes me enraged when I know that guy's but trying to look at my it, ass. It doesn't <laughs> enrage me. It makes me laugh because I find the humor in that. But, I'm oh, not bothered by but it. But if you were working with that guy and he was fucking, le like, for I, real, you'd hate his guts. I, I'd be all right. I'd, I mean, I'd be all... every guy, not just that guy. I'd yeah. be... oh, Whatever, God. man. Then I, oh. I then I got it going on. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me an insight, dude. That fucking feeling that, really? that yes, I... in the gym, in the locker room, a guy trying to look at my dick. It just, oh. it made me so fucking angry, and it shouldn't have. But no. it made it really annoyed me. It doesn't mm -hmm. bother me because I'm not. I know I'm not doing anything about it. Like, you know. Oh, his sneaky little peek. So it's fun to go, what? <laughs> Fucking cocksucker, yeah, yeah. what? <clears throat> it makes me giggle. Oh, you're fighting me. nature again, though, too. I mean, you know, girls like Lexi. And you're fighting basic human nature. There's that animal instinct of a man that looks at a woman and, and sees her as a sexual being. Mm -hmm. You know? True, but we have to, you know what? But the, certain, women, certain women at work would go, tough shit. It's the same as a guy who oh, robs yeah. you going, animal instinct. I see what I want and I take it. Well, okay. It and animal instinct, I'll turn around and shoot you in the face. But you don't know, but you don't, <laughs> Defending my... I fucking kill. <laughs> but the point is, that's that. Yeah. You're right. But that's you can't think of it that way. But as humans, we like to think we're much further advanced than that. So we put on this facade, right. and we fake that we're tolerant, and and we fake that we're not these sexual beings, and we're not uh, uh, oogling at these girls that might come to work a little scantily clad. It's this fucking charade that goes on mm -hmm. uh, where everyone's. It's not sincere. It's just like it's the not apology. working. It's just like the apologies we see on the news from people that well, use language that right. they completely mean and and were sincere when they said it in the first place. It's a big fucking lie. Everyone's lying to each on. other. It's not right. working. Right. We're it's making fake. believe there's diversity. Exactly.
I true. I completely agree. A rectum mundo. And as far as mm. I can handle myself, so I don't care if the guy. I laugh at that. I giggle. It uh, annoys me. I laugh. Giggle. It just makes me giggle. It's hilarious. You put his dick in your mouth. You <laughs> no, laugh. No, no, you no, laugh. No, <laughs> no, 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 dude. That's the first time I, I ever felt that way. Like it really was like it, yeah. it made me angry just because I I don't like this guy's vibe. Wow. Did you pull your towel a little tighter? And, oh no! But I wanted to say something really. Call him a masher. Like I'm such a fucking. And I see him almost every day and I wanted to say yeah. something nasty like fucking like you should then fuck it no because I don't know if it's my own imagination and it's like mm. a again it was like it's not worth fantasizing getting... yeah you can't you can't prove anything it's like you can't he hasn't done anything <clears throat> I just know I'm getting irritated so if dealing with that all the time from every colleague or 90 percent of the colleagues would be fucking because yeah. it was unwanted attention. Do you understand you should, this guy creeped out Jimmy people? I just want to. Yeah, I just want to really, you should walk, really put that forward. You should walk around <laughs> with a raging heart on and basically say, "And you can't have this." And let him lo watch him lose his fucking mind. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. want to argue with Lex uh, Lexi. I hope I picked the right guy here. Oh, uh, we'll go with William in Jersey. You're on with Lexi. Go oh, ahead, Bill. <clears throat> hey, heads up, thanks. Hey, how's it going? Uh, the reality is that you know this is really a subjective question. If if Lexi's looking hot and she's at work and a really good looking guy who's interested in her might be flirting with her. She might be like, Oh, very nice, very nice. It might even it might even you know, she might even go back and flirt back, but if it's a fucking troll, you know, big A or someone like that oh, is flirting geez, all poor sudden, big A. It's, it, it, it's an it's an H R issue. And that's really and that's Huffing really the, the, the problem. Wow, you William, you make a great no point. Place. You make a you know, great you know, fucking point. That's that's the that's that's the really fucked up thing is that is that yeah everyone wants to look hot everyone wants to be desired but they want to be desired subjectively by someone who they're attracted to or they're interested in but you can't have it both ways right. you can't go into work looking hot and expect only the really good looking guys that you're attracted to uh, to be interested mm. in everyone else to fucking walk away and, and, it's clown shoes and, total bullshit it's clown shoes I like that fucking clown I, I mean shoes. I hope you, people aren't confusing the issue here what we started I I don't I don't think it's we're, it's okay for guys to just walk around and no. be like, hey, nice tits, no, honey. No, 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 I'm talking no, no, about the no, subtle no, shit that will get you in trouble. And, and you can and you can apply the subject this idea of subjectivity to just about anything, you know. You know, obviously, uh, you know, if if, if you're an inner city, you know, black kid and Je you know Jesse Jackson comes up to you and gives you some attention, you know, be because of your color, you're going to be like, yeah, all right. But if it's the police or something or something like that, you're not going to like it. So it's really it's not just it's not just about uh, you know look how look how successful our politicians are catering and pandering to. The, to these smaller minority groups because they give them what they want and they're giving them the attention and they're powerful politicians, so they want that. But, but if it's someone else, no, I don't want it. Let me ask you a question, and, and you raise a point about wanting someone attractive to flirt with you, of course, but the problem is the companies have, have over historically, didn't fire people. when it, 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 I don't think anybody was suing because of light flirting. Hey, the ugly guy in the mailroom smiled at me and asked me out once. That's not what the lawsuits were about. The yeah. lawsuits were about... When, when you, when you like would read them, you go like, "Oof!" Like, how the fuck did the company let that go on? That's where it became oh, a problem. Okay, but why is it then? Because that happened, then light flirting is not okay now. Ask the company. The I know that. Yeah. I, I understand your point. There's 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 times where yeah, that's completely unacceptable. But what ends up happening is then they go, well, this particular thing you can't pinch someone's hiney at the workplace, but now you can't TV. even you can't even have a calendar up. You can't even say right, right. pretty much say hi to a woman that's not in your department in the hallways. It's gone way the other way. Yeah, they they, they wipe the whole thing out. But that's companies. That's companies. That's individual companies. Yeah, but, but it's all companies at this yeah. point. It's not even individuals right. anymore. Oh, boy. No, no, no. But I mean, companies as in, as like Sirius never talked to CBS. They they both doing the right. same thing though. As just as individual separate entities, yeah. they all see the lawsuits and they're but, like nothing, zero tolerance. But no. you're making my you're making my point because going back to the the Halloween costumes, it's not. It was just one kid felt left out or alone that day. So okay, now we have to wipe it out for everybody. Right. Which That's goes, crazy. Which goes to back me. to the point that it's the fault of the people of who, are, who are, are bending over right. irrationally. And somehow we all got to speak up more. Getting back to that original point. Yeah, this poor guy. Or, or, Sorry. Or, or, or maybe the problem, maybe the problem is, is because they're not speaking up 
enough. And what they're doing, what they're doing is that when when a cute guy comes and hits on them, no. they let it go and let it happen because they have some interest in that person. But all mm. of a sudden, when, when when a guy maybe you know who who maybe isn't as desirable, all of a sudden it's an issue. And what they're doing is they're selectively, oh. you know, selectively choosing hmm. who who can flirt with them, Dude, do you, and who can be inappropriate with. Do you really them. think that's, that's where? Problem. Do you really think? That's the history of sexual harassment in the workplace. Like, I know what you're saying, man, but do you really believe that's where it comes from? A bunch of girls who weren't happy that it wasn't the cute guy? Like, you don't think that there was any pattern of tolerated bullshit? Like, you want your wife or girlfriend treated the way a lot of women have had to be treated? And I'm not talking about the overreacting woman who freaks out if you wink at her. But you really want your, I don't know if you're married or not. If you walk, if you walk into a woman's cubicle with your dick out the front of your pants, you need to be fired. Right. Well, yeah, but you, right. it's not even well, that extreme. No one does context. that. That's a crazy example. <laughs> right. But, well, but, probably started that. That, that, that never went on. <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying, and, and, how, and how I agree with Anthony, is that, is that human nature for men and women uh, sexually or, or, or human nature in regards to politics or, or whatever, everyone wants to be like, Everyone wants sure. to be loved. Everyone wants to be viewed mm -hmm. as, as as being sexually powerful. Are you? And are you and everyone wants oh. to be protected. Oh boy! Yes. Wow! Yes. Right. Oh, she's right. Oh boy! She's Look right. out! Absolutely. I forgot old Mrs. Glass ceiling is fucking <laughs> on the line <laughs> right. here. We forgot Jesus about her. Christ. <laughs> Wait, let Lexi respond to this guy. She hasn't said anything. Lexi, yeah. I, let, yeah, Lexi. Let, let, let's respond to you. Wow. You have to remember that there is a time and a place for everything. The workplace is not a place to go pick up women. If you want to pick up women... Oh, I don't know about that. The Oldster did pretty pretty good back in the day. Some numbers? I put up some numbers at radio stations. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Lexi, you're absolutely wrong. I think there's a lot of guys rolling their eyes right now. They did very well in the workplace. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the place that you go to pick up women. But it happens. Well, sometimes and, and, relationships are uh, forged in the workplace. Yeah, have you? You've yeah, heard of happy now, hour, now haven't you? Of, and now a lot of companies frown on that. And if you do have a relationship that develops into a marriage, well, one of the people has to leave. That's a mm -hmm. good point. There's a policy here. I think you're not yeah. allowed to like uh, date someone. Oh, you know what me that and Jimmy is? have had to keep that quiet for oh years. Oh my God! Now, you know how hard this is to just jerk each other off in the restaurant real quick? <laughs> so you have a you have a animal you have a natural attraction to someone you work with, and these yeah. companies will not allow that to right, happen. Right. Thank you to workplace shootings and all that stuff. They don't want a oh, relationship going wrong and having the the whole environment being fucked mm -hmm. up yeah, because yeah, exactly. two people are fighting or one guy gets violent or clean, and then you break up, and then I, the dynamics of work are fucked up. I know of someone mm. that had to keep their workplace uh, relationship very quiet around here. Ooh, around here. Yep. Well, let me think. I don't know if that person Sam wants to speak up. Roberts. It's not my place to say who it is. Oh, Sam and who kid. it could be. But, I think I know who it is. But they uh, they had a relationship uh, going into Sirius XM. Oh, even. They didn't even boy. meet at Sirius XM. Oh, boy. Or maybe That's they wrong. did. I think they might have actually. I, I got to remember this, but they had to keep it very, very quiet, and they were scared. Yeah, they were, they were absolutely scared that that could be a problem if anyone found out. E Rock comment. <laughs> not saying it's E Rock. I know. I'm just... Not saying it's E Rock. <laughs> I just want to comment. Can I ask the guy? Look, I even love when p pigs look at me. You know, oh, sexually, it doesn't mean not, it doesn't mean I want to. It doesn't mean I want to bang them. Sure, exactly. but if a, if a two like I'm walking you know down a street and a two looks at me like that I'm I, I I'm, I'm a little lighter on my fucking steps I'm it's amazing a little, little happier. Wait, you don't yeah. call the police. The guy on the phone. Are you married? Oh wow! Are, dude, are you are you a married guy? Are you in a relationship? Oh uh, yes, I am in a relationship. Okay, so and you and you're a guy like I am. So do you do you just go out? Does your girl let you go out and fuck other women? Ooh. No, no, no. It's a fair question because and we all know this. Human nature for a man is to stick your dick in everything. Mm. So sure. in, your, in your relationship, do you come home and go, hey, it's human nature. I can go out and just fuck other girls. Or have you adjusted and taken the human nature angle and said, yeah, tough shit, it's human nature. I have to adjust because this is what I'm doing. But you still want to. Wanting is one. Yeah. No one says you can't want. Exactly. It's behavior. It's not thoughts but, that are but, being But there are certain about. people that think that Jimmy, they can actually stop You're absolutely want. right. Jimmy is, Jimmy is absolutely right. 
our human our human nature is to be is to be is is to feel that attraction and try to find a way to procreate if you want to go down to the very base of our instincts. Right. Right. And that and Jimmy's absolutely right. And and what I, and, and the point that I'm trying to make is that is that in the workplace when you see an attractive person, right? You're going and, and you're available or you've made yourself available. You know, you want to talk to that person. You want to get to know that person. That's absolutely fine. And that person, you know, is going to be able to say yes or no. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Now, if someone if someone's a fucking retard and they and, you know, they hear the answer. No. You're not coming. And they and they and they continue and they continue to <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they, and they continue to pursue it. Then obviously then obviously there there is a problem. But but the point but but the point that I think, uh, you know, uh, Anthony and 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 Opie very so eloquently make, put it. Thank you. Is, right? is that is that fucking is that the brilliant. Is that, we want to be. You cannot. Yeah. You cannot. He is where we want to be. Human nature. Right. No, no, no. But is absolutely insane. nobody it's wants insane. to break you human break nature. It, but, you, but you can tame it. You can't break it. But you can tame it and live within the laws. Oh well, yeah, I, I, but but then but then but then the reality, I think we all have common ground here. I think where you're going with it, where you're going with this, is if you, if you if you agree then that you cannot disrupt human nature. Now I guess we have to have we have to have uh, offices that are either all male or all. No, female. dude, how come? The only way to solve your problem. You're not. No. The only way to fix it, sir. You're not. I mean, my question was, how do you override your human nature and remain monogamous to your girlfriend? You've overridden human nature because your situation dictates that behaviorally you have to. You're no, in a relationship. I, over, I override it because I'm not an, because I'm a human being and not an animal. Okay, yeah, and we're not, okay, and okay, we're not exactly. talking about we're not talking about people that you want to fuck the people you work with. You can't even just look at them sexually. That's where the start. The excuse is being. How can you not be attracted? That's where the start. No one cares if anyone's a, attracted. No one's been punished big, for that. It's a big leap to go with you know looking at someone sexually and actually having sex with them. But uh, but it's it's about hitting on them or, or making them uncomfortable by being creepy. It's not about being. A, no one cares if you're attracted. Mm. Subjective, Jimmy. That's subjective. If I if I was Brad Pitt or so or someone who women generally found it attractive, was. I could actually go to work and fucking do that every day. Yeah, but we, we all have a, a certain right? commonality of behavior. No. no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Good looking um, guys do get sued for sexual harassment. Hmm. A lot of time a lot of times it's probably better looking guys that don't know how to handle no. Like, it's usually, I think uglier people are normally better at taking rejection and are more used to picking up on shitty vibes. It's the good-looking, powerful people a lot of times mm-hmm. who don't understand that somebody doesn't want to mm. fuck them and they can't handle it. Yeah. I would... Not again, always, I but would, I'm saying... I would agree. I would agree with you, but, but, but as long as advances are also accepted in the workplace, which they are, right? At times, sure. As long as, long, as long as advances are still accepted in the workplace and everyone's not like Lexi, then you're, oh. you're always going to, this problem will always perpetuate itself. So Lexi is being 100% legit. She just well, goes to work and does her thing. She's and, not saying anything wrong. Sure. And, and she's probably, no offense to Lexi, uh, she's a special, not a special case, but she was sexually abused as a child. When, I would like to. I, I would like to hear from a woman, maybe that wasn't sexually abused as a child, and how she feels in the workplace. Oh, then I bet she's like Samantha from Sex and the right. City. <laughs> well, we went in the copy room. Right. I blew them. I completely see why Lexi doesn't want you know guys looking at her in a sexual way in yeah. general. I wa- I wondered. Uh, I don't want to say a normal or any of that shit, but yeah. a, a woman that wasn't sexually abused, if she uh, agrees with Lexi. Yeah. Just remember the staff guys, one in four girls. So there's a lot of women out there like me. Mm. If you do look at a woman and you do her damaged people, baggage, that. I don't care if you guys look at me and say that I'm pretty or I'm sexy or I have a nice body. Just keep it to yourselves. Look, admire, but don't act on it. That's when the sexual harassment line gets crossed. All right. If I'm not inviting you to come talk to me, if I'm not inviting you, you know. Oh, so it's up to you. Yes! Of course it is! Of course it is! <laughs> it's up to you! But I don't. The, all right, but the discussion didn't start where it is now. I'm not talking about. I'm not. I, I, I was never talking about over the top flirting in the workplace, by the way. Right. I, I just wasn't. Thanks. Uh, all right, buddy. Thanks, Thanks all William. Right, you too. Thanks, Lexi. Why don't you just fucking get it over with? <laughs> all right, right, Human, Lexi. Human nature is not an. Ex- <laughs> it's like we all have it. I get it. I mean, yeah. I get it. Believe me, I'm a pervert. Yeah. I'm a fucking pervert, oh. and I don't fuck with women here. 
No. You understand? No like I, 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 I'm a big one of the biggest yeah. perverts in this building. But you don't, I get, don't, you don't get women. you don't get shit on while you, where you eat. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but we're not. But that's not what we're really completely talking about. Sure it is. I, I really. I don't even. Talk, I don't even say hi to women in, in the hallway because I, I, I'm. I'm scared that can lead to some dumb thing. I'm not trying to have sex with women around here. Look, I, oh, I'm not. My, my, but you my, can't. You, you. You can't even really have an interaction with people at work anymore unless it's work related because you never know what it's going to be that, you know, gets you into the HR office. My point on this whole thing was the fact that women uh, sometimes think that they're changing the, the behavior and the mindset of men and that when they walk into work and they're they're doing their job a one just the greatest job ever that they're being looked at and respected as nothing more than a good worker and that just ain't gonna happen mm -hmm. it's still an underlying bunch of bullshit to think that men aren't gonna look at you as a sexual being now you'll get someone like Lexi that'll say well, no I know that's gonna that's happening but uh, there's no place for it at work and but I, I honestly think that there are a lot of women that think right, it's not happening at all, let, even behind the scenes. Well, let's, you know, and, let, you know. Yeah, yeah, we pushed the discussion drastically forward. Yeah. I wasn't even talking about like having sex or no, any no. Of that shit. I mean, uh, ladies, guys, I'm when talking they about go, just normal interaction that men and women just happen yeah. to have uh, during the day. But and I'm when guys hang out together, here. they are going to talk about your ass, ladies. They're, you know, even at work, well, we, you know, you look around, make sure there's no other girls, and then go, right. "Holy shit, did you and, see whoever?" And uh, that's why I didn't want to confuse it. Of course, if you're being aggressive to a woman at, at work, that's a that's all that's a that's wrong. You yes. can grab her by the arm and shake her a little, <laughs> <laughs> or just point at your dick and clear your throat. Right. <laughs> and, uh, this started with subtle shit, like you can't say, "Oh, that that dress looks nice on you today." You can't uh, even say that anymore. Yeah. Uh, let's say hi to Rosie in uh, Jersey. Ooh. Hi. I hope you can hear me. I'm driving. Hi, Rosie. Oh, hi, Rosie. Hi. I I agree with you. Both you and um, Opie and Anthony, 100 percent. Oh, thank you. No, with what though? Because we kind of yeah. tackled a bunch of little things here today. Well, as far as you know, how women dress in the workplace, and especially when you're working like in an all-man field. Yeah, and, that's cool. You no, know, men are men. You can't, you can't control, you know, their thoughts and. Remember, the discussion started with women dressing. Sexy at work, but we're not allowed to notice that. Mm -hmm. That's where this started. It went into a whole bunch of different places, obviously. And, and when, when you you hear about these sensitivity training things that go oh, on at work, Christ. it 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 they 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 aren't saying um, things like, "Hey, uh, well, we know you want to fuck her, but keep it on the QT." They're actually trying to get you to not even think about it. Which, which is just a lie. They're saying, like, you know, women shouldn't be looked at in this way, gentlemen. She's just another coworker, And it's, it's, that's why everyone laughs at those fucking courses, because it's the, the, the utter bullshit of the whole thing. Because it's not human nature. We all know not to fucking, or the, for the most part, not to go grab an ass and right. whipping your dick out. We all fucking know this. But we're still going to look at women as sexual beings. You can Sorry. look. No one says don't think of it. Don't touch. <laughs> but you're you're married. Like in Sam, you're married. Yeah. Like if you your wife's at work, how do you want her treated? Like I've thought that with my ex girlfriend. Yeah. If they look like, at her sexually, whatever. Absolutely. I don't give a fuck. No one cares. Look right. at my chick too. Fine. But you don't. It, you, it, there's a point where you don't want her to talk to a certain of way. Of course. You don't want a guy coming over to desk every day. Right. But that, but, yeah, but we're not even that at that point. No. That's what. That's no. the whole discussion. We weren't going to that point. Of course, there should be rules in place at, at workplaces. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's it's this notion that you can't even you know, like Ant said, think any sexual thoughts because yeah. a girl came in looking hot. Right. But I'm again, I'm I'm a dirty guy, and I've talked to um, plenty of women here, and I'm never afraid I'm going to get in trouble for sexual harassment. Never, because uh -huh. I don't say anything stupid to them. Well, I don't, we're also. I don't, we're, I mean, uh, sorry, Jimmy. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no. Uh, see, I don't. I don't do that because I just know, like, you can't do it, and it's fine. Human nature, but, fuck human nature. I just don't do it. But we're a little, we're a little luckier too because of what we do. It's a little, a little more open-minded here. Not much. I talk to these chicks like they're fucking lawyers. All of yes. them. I don't. But, but I, I don't. I just nod to people around here because I, I don't. I don't know what people's switches are anymore. And and, and hearing all these horror stories, HR horror stories, I just nod. I'm like, hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but generally, if you talk to people like human beings, yeah. you're not going to get in trouble. People aren't getting in trouble for just 
being a human. I talk to girls. Oh, boy, that's all the time. Oh, do you? Oh, really? What do you say? Huh? There are so wow. many people out there that think they were talking to a woman just being a human being, and, and we could take an hour of phone calls that they got in trouble. And the things they got in trouble for would blow your mind. Because we've done this would break. Would blow your mind. We've done this break. <laughs> Some things you, th would. you think you're talking like just a normal human being. Yeah, but yeah. some people are just genuinely dumb and don't know. It's like I'm, I'm not talking about those people. That guy who called I'm, up a minute I'm, ago. I'm talking about the average person that thinks he's going to work and just being a human being. And next mm -hmm. thing you know, he's in human resources for the dumbest stupid. We've taken these calls a million times. If you want, we could take a few more today. That guy who just called up, he's not a dumb guy. And he made sense with what he said. Mm -hmm. But like the way he was describing it, it's like human nature is not... Uh, you, you take. We all understand human nature. It's right. a, woman's, a woman's human nature to want to give birth and to be protected and to be care. We get, but when you're in work, you just got to act a certain way, and we yeah. all get that. Right, right. It Let's, is what it is, and everybody well, knows that. And it wouldn't be as strict well, if it hadn't been for companies ignoring things for so long and mm -hmm. allowing it to go beyond. And you hear those horror stories, and you're like, how the fuck did a company let this happen? You could also argue the point that you know these women wanted to be part of the men's club there and get into uh, the work. Uh, environment that that was mm -hmm. predominantly male uh, for so many years, and um, yeah, they wanted to be know. treated. And, and again, I'm not Mr. Woman's Rights, believe me. But people want to get in. They shouldn't have to just take what's coming to them because they want to get the same treatment as other people. That's not fair either. Yeah. Let, let's talk to a couple more women because we don't have the vaginas. Oh, nice. uh, DJ, a girl in Florida. What's up, DJ? Hey, good morning. Good morning, hey, DJ. So here's the good thing. morning, you animal. <laughs> <laughs> I am an animal. And you know what? I am that book. I'm 43, not 20 years old anymore. But you know what? I work in a completely female-dominated field. I'm a nurse. And you know what? Yeah, I still want to be able to, when I walk into work, it's okay if you're looking at me. It's fine. You know what? God did not give me this body for not to be looked at. Whoa. You know I don't mean, Doesn't I don't it... mean am I perfect. I am not perfect. Um, you know, I'm heavier than I was when I was 20 or uh -oh. older. But a little more gray hair, but you know what? I can still bring Fat it. That old bro. <laughs> <laughs> she said she could still bring it, though. But it, all, all, you know my point was simple when this started. That just makes you feel good when someone looks at you sexually. It does. You know what? Look, I'm married, but you know what? It, I'm not dead. You know what I mean? Oh, boy. And, and I can still appreciate a good looking woman. Good or deep tick. Oh. You know, I'm not, I'm not gay, I'm straight, but my point is is that, you know, the industry, the perfume industry, the makeup industry, the clothing industry, oh. it's all targeted to say, hey, you know what, you got to put them out there. Hey. You know, nice ass, put it out there. You know, it's you not. Comment. That's not. <laughs> but we've seen a, a, a drastic turn in, in advertising where they don't, they don't do the hot woman as much as they do the quote, I'll say it this way, hot, hot guy. Oh, yeah. Like a hot guy with no clothes on is completely acceptable now on, uh, in, in ads. Give but us you, an example, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you do that shit with women, it's not yeah. accepted anymore. Yep. But, but you know what? That's because everybody's so freaking close-minded. Playtex just started running in Victoria's Secret, you know, with the women with their bras, and they're showing the... Uh, you know, the Victoria's Secret, the model thing that they do every year. You know what? Because it's still taboo. People still look at the body as a dirty thing and not as what it is. It is the human body. And Jimmy's right. You know what? Um, down, down to the cellular level, men Ooh. need to do that. They need to spread their seed. I mean, it's just, it's unfortunate. It's genetic. That's exactly what it is. But when it comes to the human nature discussion, any guy that's married and is faithful or in a relationship is faithful, Human nature is that you're not faithful. Human nature is that you're going to go out and fuck a lot of other women. And in marriages and relationships, if you found a way to be faithful, then you have you have right. understood the difference between right. human nature and what works for this situation. Right. But sometimes it's just uh, all you need is to know that you're still sexually attractive to uh, fair enough, you know, to uh, other women. That's all, you know. Yeah. That makes you feel good, and that's all you know that yeah. you need to get you through the day. But people, I think women like that too. I just think a lot of times at work, when they're trapped in a fucking room with someone for eight hours, they mm -hmm. don't want it. And if they are selective about who they want it from, yeah, I mean that's the way the world is. Some people you like attention from, some you don't. The workplace just sucks. They've taken away all the little little things that would help you get mm -hmm. through the day.
It just sucks now. Well, stuff like the calendars and like a, a joke, that's where companies have gotten ridiculous. Like that's how it's gotten a, nonsensical. American flags. Yeah. How about, yeah. we're not even talking about just the sexual stuff. Baby you know, pictures. Yeah, baby really? pictures. Yes, yeah, that's some, what I'm trying to tell some you. Some women, uh, they're, they're barren and they're wounded. Some women busted. can't have children. We've, we've had this call a few times over the years. Makes them sad. So, you know, they go to HR and go, you know, uh, Susie over there with that picture with her kids, that kind of makes me. Uh, mm. Sad every day. So next thing you know, they make a rule: you can't even have family pictures in your cubicles. Yeah, yeah. They should have We're no barren our fucking minds. Yes. <laughs> well, that's where that's where companies are stupid. That's where it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. No balance. Yeah. There's no balance. No, I don't. I don't believe in the company anymore. Mm. And I mean that just you know. That's a, a sweeping exactly. statement. I'm Hawaiian shirt about... Fridays are pretty fun, though, right? Right. <laughs> gotta, gotta admit. I'm not talking about this particular company. I'm talking about all companies. I don't believe in mm -hmm. the company at all. They will not protect you in the end. They will just, they will fuck you in the end. Mm. There was a time they would protect radio guys and everybody else, but not anymore, man. Too many um, lawsuits and shit, right. I think. Oh, yeah, right. and, and, but it. the lawsuits were brought on by, by simply by... And again, I know that there's there's out of whack responses to innocent moments, but that's yeah. not what the lawsuits were. And when you I've, you, know, re you read some of these cases, you're like, if this is the truth, how the fuck did any rational company think this was not going to bite them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy does this every day, and you leave him there. People are obsessed with uh, Jimmy with the creepy guy at the gym. Uh, oh, okay. Jordan, I'll log out. Go ahead. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Hey Jordan. Hey. First of all, uh, my point completely changed from when I from when I started out on hold. There's a guy in my gym. First of all who I think named Looky Lou because he just cannot keep his eyes to himself. And, of course, he's six foot four with a giant mustache. If he was wearing, like, a trench coat, it would be even more appropriate than sauna. But, but if, if the better point actually is recently I went and bought a car, and I had a female sales, uh, salesperson, and she was purposely reaching across my lap to show me the features on the steering wheel, bending over, she was wearing low. So sure, the dick shift. Yeah, she's selling you something. She's smart. Mm -hmm. yeah. but Jim, I gotta well, she's you, using her sexuality to her advantage there, sure. right? Sure. Totally distasteful because my feeling was like, it's one thing if I'm in a bar and I'm hoping that she's going to reach across my junk and, and, and point something out. That's great. But if, if that was That's a man... It's a shanker. <laughs> it's a VD joke. <laughs> Without the joke part. <laughs> Esky joke was, she, part. was she pretty? Oh, well, I mean, probably... 15 years ago, maybe. Okay. Yeah, but my point is, even if she's she, a... 18? <laughs> <laughs> my point is, even if she's a pig and she does that move, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going, all right, man, that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Doesn't mean yeah. I want to have sex with the broad. Yeah. I yeah. gotta tell you, it wasn't cool, and I'll tell you why. Because my whole, the whole time she's doing this, I'm saying to myself, if this was my girlfriend who was sitting there and it was a guy reaching across, I'm going to put five across his lip. I'm not Whoa. It was, Your whole cock? <laughs> put five across his lip, my God. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Sorry. <laughs> They're saying you have a small penis. Uh, Five's small, right? I was saying uh, huge. Five's big. <laughs> well, the Yolks are doing all right there. Uh, where are we? Jordan? All right, Jordan. You know, that would annoy you if a guy did it to your chick. Yeah, no. absolutely. All right, yeah. Jimmy, let's put this one for you, all right? Oh. Here you go. Thanks, buddy. Wow. Well, I don't think we got anything accomplished here. Well, you know, we threw it out there, huh? Yeah. Throw it against the wall. This guy, sticks. this guy says in the 80s he almost got fired for sexual harassment, and he wasn't even talking to the girl. This, these are yeah. kind of the phone calls. He was just jacking off on her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, was, she couldn't. She was duct taped. <laughs> what happened, sir? We advanced the discussion forward, obviously, but I really was, was trying to keep it more in that subtle vein. Yeah. Uh, and maybe Bill has something on that. Bill, go ahead. Yeah, back in like 86, 87, I was working at a factory. And we had a girl that worked down there, and she was a good-looking girl, but there was she had gone out with, you know, probably 10 or 12 guys that, I, that everybody knew oh, of. You a know? whore. Exactly. So this other guy comes up to me, and he says, uh, hey, if you got a chance, he said, would you hit that? I said, no. Nah, she's been, you know, she's been with too many guys. I don't, I don't have no interest in that. And the next day, I got called into HR, and they said that I said that I wouldn't fuck her because everybody in the plant had fucked her. And, and I got... I mean, it went off for like a week. I had to deny, deny, deny. All those, I mean, they were ready to fire me. Wait, how did they know? Yeah. How did they know? That, that, that guy, either he told her 
But I never did find out exactly how they knew. Either that guy went and told that girl that I said that I wouldn't fuck her because she'd fucked everybody, or he went straight to HR, which I believe Jesus. went to the girl. I think he went to the girl because he was trying to get in her pants, and he thought he yeah. was trying to you know, make his mark with her. Did you kill him? Yeah. She nah, killed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, see, that's the problem. But he may have went to her and lied because he's trying to fuck her right. and said that you were saying something worse and just gratuitously starting rumors about her. And then she, yeah, I mean, so basically somebody lied about you, but that's not a good example. People <laughs> lie. I can lie and say that somebody here is stealing and they'd have to call him into HR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's how nervous HR was about it. I didn't even say it. And they were, they were I mean, they, they didn't even want to hear my side of the story. They just automatically knew that, yeah, I said that. Let's fire him. So you got fired? No, I never did. I actually oh. eventually did for fighting. I beat a guy's ass. How'd you not get fired? How'd you not get fired? I just denied, denied, denied. I just kept denying it. I said, nope. I said, I don't know what the hell you talk about. I, you know, and, and they didn't have any proof that I said it. Right. And I never, and I never did say that. I, I, so you were accused of something, they took it seriously, and then you were able to prove your case. Yeah. <laughs> you proved your case by denying it, and you weren't fired. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible example, sir. <laughs> yeah, outrageous. That's, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, but I, again, they had to ask you about it. You denied it, and maybe they were too overzealous about it, but they didn't fire you. Mm. Yeah, but that was back in the 80s, too, when you could still pinch ass. What he's talking about is that's a nice little joke. Mm, that was nice back then in those days. Uh, say things. Ron and Buffalo could explain why companies react the way they do. Go ahead, Ron. Hi, Ron. Hey, guys. Um, I was just going to call and talk about how uh, Jimmy is making the point with, uh, you know, married guys not acting on it. And the whole thing with it being companies getting in trouble with the gray areas. And, you know, you're, you're pointing out, hey, you never would go, high, go ahead and cheat on your, your wife or whoever, but guys still look at porn, guys still give a sideways glance to people that walk by, girls that walk by on the street. Yes. Well, that's the kind of stuff in the office where you really get in trouble. I mean, and in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And in a relationship sometimes. There's, uh, there's a penalty mm -hmm. for those things in a relationship. Going out with. Absolutely. I'm but allowed the, to look at a right. woman on the fucking street without having to worry are, about okay, it. Okay, are you allowed to flirt text? I don't want to flirt no, text. I'm not saying you want to, but are you allowed to flirt text with a girl? Like, yeah, that's ambiguous. It's I, kind of... Or would you get in trouble right, for that? We haven't... I don't and even know because it doesn't come up. I, I, what, I, it's Sam, something I don't want to do. I, I would get in trouble. I've gotten in trouble. Everyone knows. Of course yeah. you'd get in trouble. Hey, well, why are you, you flirt doing? texting? That, I, it's something I just don't want to do. But, so it's never come up in our relationship. It's human nature for me to want to flirt with of girls course. because even though I'm not going to hook up with them, I want them to. I want to feel attractive. Right. And the more you flirt, the more you're like, oh, this chick really is into me. But yeah, but that's the gray area. That you're not cheating and you're not saying anything overly, but you're flirting a little bit. You'd get in trouble. Like your I wife, would, your wife would go yeah. like, "What are you oh, doing?" Man. Wow. That's. That all of us it's just never come up in my yeah. uh, relationship. But you, that's but you all. know the answer to that, like not not necessarily. Guys, okay, guys, not necessarily. That's, that's, that's the area where this is why the gray area. <laughs> the way the gray area exists is why companies react the way they do. It goes back to you know obviously the laws were first written because people are grabbing ass and you know doing ridiculous you know hang your dick out whatever. But when they wrote the law, as always, you know the lawyers screwed up and left something that's completely open to interpretation. You know, the company I work for, we go through extensive sexual harassment training, and the, the phrase that's in the law is that you cannot create a hostile work environment. Oh, so boy. Right. Yeah. What happens there is lawyers interpret that, and that's where you get all this bullshit stuff. So yeah, because it's kind of vague, you know. What, what makes it kind of, hostile, right? It's yeah. kind of like the FCC, you know. Rules. Yeah, yeah, a little vague. They're always vague. I mean, There's a lot of gray area there. and Sexual harassment, the, the first inkling I ever got about it when I heard about it when I was a, like a kid was... Uh, here's the boss, the all-powerful boss in the office, telling a woman uh, that he wants to do stuff to her to guarantee her advancement. That's where it comes from. Right. How it worked out to you can't hang a flag in your cubicle or or put pictures of your kids in there right. is ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Yeah, it's of course it ludicrous. is. ludicrous. Or you can't play ludicrous. Thank you, sir. That's <laughs> totally fucked up and Let, ironic. Let's go to Mike in L.A. Mm. Mike. Michael. Yeah. I was, I was talking about Jimmy uh Jimmy was the guy in the gym. I mean if that was a hot training, he'd be happy with it. Mm. But because it's a creepy guy, it's all it's the subjectivity of it, like he said. It's but everything, too much gray area and they're trying I, to legislate the gray area out. I, I certainly don't want a creepy guy looking at me in that way, but right. it I, I I don't look at it as being vile. I I just kind of laugh. Mm. It just makes it, me it laugh. Is what it is. The I point. mean, old dust cunt Lexi. Yes, yeah, she's probably oh. a lot of laying, and she gets upset. But 
<laughs> you know, if, if, if the dude's kind of, if, if she finds the dude attractive, then she's obviously going to accept more of the flirtation. Of the okay, let me ask you a question. I mean, the point I was making, dude, the point I was making was that I finally, I got how it felt to be looked at mm. in an unwanted way and it bothered me. Like, that's what the point I was making. Not if he was a good looking chick or a tranny or whatever it is. So let's just say you're at work, whatever kind of work you do. How do you, and I mean, for real, how would you feel if your boss, every time he called you into the office, was just staring at your cock? And I get, like, yeah, once or twice, ah, what the hell. You're going to tell me that wouldn't want to make you pick up a glass ashtray and smash his fucking face? Well, first off, I mean, it, it's a little flattering. He likes cock, but in all honesty, if, if it's that huge of a deal, that, that's your boss. That's different from a position of, well, if I don't, like Anthony said, with the, if you advance through the sexual harassment from your boss, that's a little different. But coworkers. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 hold on. You want to be a sexual being. You want to be looked at by certain people as a sexual creature. So you're fine. If, if, and not, not in a joke Everyone way. Does. Like, you lost all the weight, Jimmy, so you could be viewed better. The point of, of course, dude. Feel better. But I'm saying at work, are you telling me it wouldn't bother you if every time you walked in, your male boss was flirting with you a little bit and you knew he was, and it wasn't a joke, he was for real flirting with you. You'd be fine with that. Boss or coworker? Either male. or. <laughs> I'd be able to handle it. But you'd be able to handle it. I would you, be able to handle you, it. You would, yeah, you'd hate it. Imagine it. day after day. Right? Day after yeah. day. Of, it's for real. We're joking, but let's say Gary came, or whoever it was, oh. or Blatt or Mel, whoever you want to say, and flirted with you, and they weren't the joking. Guys. They weren't being funny, and it was it was like a really weird, creepy, like uh, f flirty thing. You would want what? to fucking smash them. Would mm. I be able to keep my job uh, without blowing them? Because <laughs> uh, then, would, that, that, then that. I'd be fine with that. Yes. The, yeah. And, and does it mean I get a nice huge raise? Yeah, I'd be uh -huh. all right with that. Yeah, okay. Okay. But if, it, if he moved into the next where you got to blow me or I'm firing mm. you tomorrow, then of course not. Okay. So, yeah. I wouldn't be happy about it, but I'd be able to handle but it. But it would I guess. creep you out. You would be able like to handle it. it. You wouldn't like it though. It would creep you out. You'd be like, this is fucking annoying and awful, and this guy is saying <clears> things <throat> like, if you can't, like, he complimented your body every time you walked in, and he wasn't joking. Joking. Dude, you like, look great right, in those the jeans. Fucking gym is but there is, a, for there is a line between going in as a little victim and taking it every day and going to some agency that the company has set up. You walk up to him and go, hey, knock the fuck off. Right. How about you handle things like human I would never, beings uh, that's, I like in this that. day and I would age. never feel like a victim, that's for sure. But then, you, yeah, and, and you, you, you say something then. Okay. Yeah. But you know the point I'm making. You'd hate the way it feels. You would hate yeah. it. I know I would hate that. If a guy, if a, mm -hmm. for real, a creepy one of the bosses was fucking, or even a coworker was flirting with me and like, you know, mm -hmm. and not being funny. Again, our environment, like you said, is a little weird because we're used of to course. being fucking, we don't, wow. we're hard to shock. No interest, <laughs> if you say to no interest and ask them to back off and they don't, then you have an issue. But if it's just a casual flirt yeah. or something, you might say something or lead to something back. And, and it's completely different. Like Oak said, guys want to fuck anything. If a hog tells you you're sexy, yeah, I don't want to fuck her. But it hey, makes you feel know, good for the for that moment. Yeah, okay. And I, of yeah, course, I mean, there should be rules in place. I if, if it was a zero or the, a hog, I'd go fuck the hog. But women are so different about that. Oh, he's ugly. I don't like him. That's harassment. Oh, I fuck him. That's who he's flirting and, with me. And I'm not saying throw the all the you know the rules out the window. Like if a male coworker is flirting with you and you fucking say, look, knock it off, and you know it's just it's not my thing, whatever, and he continues, yeah. then of course you got to do something about it. That's right. Of course. So, so you're saying we're not fucking cavemen here. You don't mind if, if your male coworker or your male boss was just because uh, you have the same thing I do. Like I like to be looked at by certain people. Other people know. If they stare at me every day, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Okay, you don't. But the most I don't give a fuck. All right. Well, but if he's flirting you know. with me, then I would absolutely say something. And then if if that doesn't go anywhere, then maybe I would have to deal with it. But if he was way. staring at you, that would get I don't like. Give a fuck. Okay. I really don't. I don't believe you, but I think that would drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't was... drive me crazy. I'd be creeped out and stuff. But right. I, exactly. I, but I wouldn't give a fuck a, enough to go down to HR or, or any of that. Is what I'm saying. Because be... you just know when you walk out the door, you're gonna have to deal with shit every day. But do you want to work eight hours or four hours a day, whatever it is, being creeped out? It wouldn't be we four do. hours a day. But, <laughs> look, look who I sit next to. But you know what I'm saying, though? Yeah, how many times have you went, ooh? <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, though. If, if it's for real, I, yeah, it yeah, would yeah. bother me. But I'd be able to just handle it, is, I guess, my point. You know, there's so many things you got to deal with as soon as, soon as you leave the house.
already dictating to everybody else. As, 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 it's not going to ruin my day or any of that crap. It would. Be, right, you. It wouldn't. But it would ruin my day if some guy was creepily fucking leering at me at work. Like for real, it would ruin ruin my day if it happened day in and day out. And he always you always found HR. Because that's the point here, I guess. Because, um, like I said, you get, we all deal with shit. There's it's, people again, around here that, as soon as I see their face, I, I, it gets me annoyed. But it doesn't ruin my day. As a guy, it's hard because I haven't had to deal with that. So I don't know if I'd go to HR. Mm. But if a guy was coming up to me every day and being flirty and being like, uh, and it was a guy I didn't like or a guy I wasn't friends with or wasn't comfortable with, and I knew what he was doing, I might say something to him, or I might go. I might have went to Gary or to, or to Steve and go, "What the fuck is this guy but, doing every day coming up here? Like, how annoying is it when when when, when we're doing radio and well, you have to look out that? Hold on, sir. Hold on. First. When you're oh, you're looking out that window, and a guy walks up and throws a look in here. Well, you don't, but no, no. It you, bothers you, me until he, I don't see him anymore. But it bothers you. It bothers but, me. It bothers all of us. But then I don't think about it anymore. But if it happens, I, I feel, he's gone. I feel a sense of pride that I could also you know handle myself in these situations. That I don't need a stupid HR department to fucking fight my my battles. Um, I would handle it myself. I would fucking say, "Look, enough, stop. What are you doing?" Yeah, but you would say something. Hurts. Okay, you would say you would have that moment where you said something because it bothered you. I, I would handle my own shit. Really yeah. What if it didn't yeah. stop? I don't know. I have no idea. You know at what I'm that saying? Point. That's because if you handle I, it I that way, I certainly would avoid the person at work and all that shit. That. That's but kind companies of... also allow relationships in the office, whether there's rules or not. I work for a company that's doing it right now. But we get an uh, honor code deal where you can't date employees, yet we allow it, too. So, it, it, we're, I mean, it's so much mm. subjectivity. Well, we're going to do this. or my, As long I, as a chick's feelings aren't hurt, there will be no issues. But when the I, girl's feelings get hurt, now everybody's in trouble. All right, Mike. You know, like I said uh, many times during the discussion, we've pushed this discussion way f further than where we started. Yeah. Like, here's another guy. The, 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 the company tells them what cell phone ringtones they're allowed to use. Like, why is that a problem? Probably because yeah. they got one from my app that went, pick up the phone, cunt. Pick up the phone, cunt. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's, see what I, let's see what this is about. Mike, what are you talking about with ringtones? What's the problem with ringtones at your work? What's going on, boys? Or I, just I say had, that. Uh, Steve Miller, the Joker, that was inappropriate. So I switched it to Fat Bottom Girls. That Smart. was inappropriate. Well. You know. Wait, why is it? Well, hold on, hold on. First of all, Steve Miller, the Joker. What's why? Why would that be a problem as a ringtone? Because it stinks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Midnight, Midnight Toker? Toker, a little drug use. Oh wow. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any problems with it. I just find no. It why did they find it a problem? Uh, it's I a pretty innocent a, song, except for the token really line. You peaches want to shake your tree? My uh, uh, I guess. I don't know. Peaches, they're probably tits, so, right? Wow. So they I actually guess, told uh, you what ringtones you could have? Well, they were saying that if we don't, if I don't personally change the ringtone, I might have to be brought down to HR and, and explained um, business etiquette. His phone's going, the house next door to me <laughs> was sold. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see where that, that's my point, though. It's like, okay, so, sure, some yeah. of these ringtones could be a problem, but it's the dumb ones like The Joker by Steve Miller. Ridiculous. And, and the other thing we got to add to this discussion before we take a break, a lot of this shit comes from middle management just being power-hungry douchebags, too. Justifying their job. We all know that. That's yeah. the point. The old days, your manager used to come up to you or whoever it was, your co-worker, and say, listen, this is what's going on. Do me a favor. Get rid of it. Now, the big HR hanging over your head. Everything you do, HR, HR, HR. So, you know, it's it's, uh, it's getting crazy. Mm, here's a guy. Well, thank you, sir. L let me go to Nick in Ohio. We're trying to go to break, but there's some good calls coming in. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi, Nick. So, I worked the shitty-ass fucking uh, security gig for UPS. Uh, about six years ago, and I had a supervisor, and the dude, he was gayer than fucking Paris. I mean, it was obvious, but I never said anything. Wait, I've never heard that one before. Gayer than no. fucking Paris? No one's ever said it before. Doesn't gayer mean than Paris. Hey, hey, gay Paris. Gay Paris. Oh. I kind of like that. It's pretty mm. funny. All right, go ahead, man. Anyways, man, so uh, I let that shit fly. I, I mean, I didn't like it. I didn't feel comfortable, but whatever. After about two months, uh, the shit kind of started to escalate, and I could see the dude was trying, kind of flirting, but he wasn't saying anything directly. I had a bad day. I came into work. I wasn't going to fucking take it. I finally told him, I said, hey, man, enough of the gay shit. I said, I can see what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. This fucker went and turned it around, went straight up to HR, 
filed a report basically saying it was harassment, that I was harassing him for being gay before I could actually go and, you know, oh. say something myself, so... Whatever. Oh, okay. So he probably cut. He probably uh, cut you off by doing that. By uh, he, he was. It was a. That was a. What's the word? Mm. The, when you strike first. Preemptive. Uh, preemptive right. strike. Yes. Well, we all know. Yeah, no, we no. all know. We're all supposed to accept the gay now. You're not allowed to be against the gay, which is that ridiculous. Was a shitty job anyway. So fuck it. Hey, you guys have a good day. All right. I'm not. I'm not against the gay, but I. I think people, if they're against the gay, should be able to express that. I don't know why we all have to be accepting of that through hatred and. No, I don't mean it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Once again, there's there's things, of course, that, that yeah. are completely unacceptable. But you're not mm -hmm. even allowed to express that you're uncomfortable with uh, the gay lifestyle or whatever. Right. That will right. get you in a shitload of trouble. I'm not talking about you know violence or any of that yeah, crap. Yeah. yeah. Line four, an HR lady. Ooh. Ugh, Christ. Hope she's in a, hope she's in an accident right now as she calls. Hi <laughs> Tiffany. Hi, it works Tiffany. for HR. The Tiffany. Hi guys, I love you guys so much. For All right, oh, whatever. Thank you. Sorry about my last comment. I don't like anyone that works in HR. <laughs> really, I just I guess I feel defensive, but um, it is annoying. It is annoying. It's very tough to run a business these days. The laws are very hard to enforce. But I will tell you, you know. Of all of the claims that I get, most of them are bullshit. Most of them we don't act on. We don't discipline employees. You guys may just hear about the more sensational stories. You know, like you said, if a guy pulled his dick out in a cubicle, yeah, you're probably going to hear about that. But the average claim I get is, you know, a chick saying, hey, my boss sent me a text message and I'm uncomfortable with it. And then when I investigated, I found out that she actually texted him back. And oh, you know, that's what? usually how it goes. So I love my job. It's really entertaining. But there's, there's, the laws are in place for a reason, just like um, like Jimmy's comment. Because there was, you know, there were atrocities in previous times, and we're trying to regulate the workforce and blah, blah, blah. But if you look at the law, it talks about what is reasonable. And, you know, mm -hmm. I've been through cases where there's juries, and when the juries have to make a decision, the judge says, make a decision based on what is reasonable to the average person. Um, and the law also talks about if it's unwelcome or not. So even the law recognizes if it's welcome, it might just be okay. What about no means yes? That's, what I, <laughs> that's the rule I like to adhere to. Yeah, is it bad to have that tattooed on your forehead? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like what, what's unwelcome and what's welcome, that's a big a big well, at my house, we all know that. <laughs> and if, you think about, if you think about workplace romances, Ooh, let's. They, they always... Me, they Sam always, Roberts. <laughs> they, they start off well, but then they usually end not so well. Yeah, with, with the boyfriend coming in with fatigues on <laughs> and, a, and a guitar case. <laughs> <laughs> That's not well, yes. What starts off is, you know, romance and good times, then all of a sudden it's unwelcome. Uh, you know, and then if you have, you know, two coworkers that are, you know, having a thing and then one of them gets promoted, then all of a sudden it's a different context and the law changes. I saw a rom-com like that. Mm. Oh, that's every rom-com. Sorry. Ah. Forgot. <laughs> Yeah, or if one starts fucking somebody else at work, and it just becomes oh, a whole boy, thing, and no yeah. boss wants to deal with that. That doesn't, it, it never works out well, yeah. Dude, I look at it like this, I'm a, I'm a hunk of shit, like, I, I am a oh. pervert, and I've never had to talk to HR here. And again, yeah. I know our environment is much different being yeah, radio guys, yeah, yeah. but out there in the office, it's not that much different. And I've interacted with enough people, <clears> and I've talked to enough people, and I've waved at enough people, and I see hello, and I've never once had an issue. So if I can survive in, in a pseudo work environment, then the average guy who's not a complete bag of filth well, can let's, too. Well, let's, let's, they're let's, not surviving. I, yeah. Maybe we just have a different um, situation here, and we're a little little luckier than the average worker. How about this too? Let's let's go back in time again, um, and uh, let's let's think before uh, the cell phones and social media. You're at work. Can we go back um, to the late 60s? I kind of yeah, like I, I love going back sure? there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because there's let's, no cell phones back let's then. Let's just go back. I, I want it to be a little <laughs> groovy. Now, J uh, Jimmy, you say, you know, you never had a problem. You, you know when you walk in the halls and stuff. But how, how much time, really, in a given work day are you actually back there? Right. Imagine, eight hours a day, you're in a cubicle environment. No social media. No real way to to meet people, girls, especially for relationships and stuff. That type of environment 
was uh, was really uh, kind of in place to to socialize. You socialized more at work back then, talking to people, and and you, you couldn't just go home and and text a, a picture to somebody or, right. or your feelings like that. So you talked more at work. There's eight hours of your day where you're interacting with people of the opposite sex. Maybe you're interested in one. So you put the feelers out there to see if they're interested. Now that alone is looked at as a violation. Even putting your feelers out there to see if someone might be up to going out on a date with you and stuff. That is taboo in the workplace. That's a good point about I don't have to be eight hours. I mean, that's very yeah, true. Yeah. I, and I get to say what I want. I can email pictures. and t- it's a Right. Big, it's, we have oh, a most different of our, situation. Most of our work day, it's just us. Right. I mean, we uh, we interact with people when we go during the breaks. That's uh, yeah. that's a total of maybe 20 minutes a day. Yeah, not even. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. But but the the thing is, if you, you say you put out feelers, part uh-huh. of the problem is, A, that most guys are, are, or, or people are dumb and push it beyond where it's wanted. Not all, right. but a lot of people don't take a hint, and they don't—they can't take when someone's not interested in them. And we all know a million people like that. Oh, sure. It's like it's obvious to everyone she's not interested. Um, and it's also at work now because again, it's not just sexual harassment; it is the violent stuff that's happened at work over relationships. It sure, just yeah. can't happen anymore. Mm-hmm. Just too many people have been shot. <clears throat> too many people have had explosive fucking situations. The girl's scared to come to work uh, because the fucking guy is just you know. <laughs> the employers don't want to deal with that shit. Yeah, yeah. So I know mm. it's easy for me to say because I don't have to right. deal with it, but you just can't do it at work. Work somewhere with a fucking hot chick, uh, or you find someone outside of work is the point of it. But you I have think, to. Yeah. I think that would be insane to the individual. You go to work and you're naturally attracted to someone and want to date them, and possibly marry them, oh, and you, you can't you're not, a, and you can't say a word. That's Unrequited crazy. love. Ah, uh, the heartbreak. Yes, yes, indeed. Guy goes, I work with a guy who wears mascara at work, and how do I address that? Just, mm, with see, a heart on. <laughs> see, that, see, whatever. That stuff is, that's the whatever stuff. I, that wouldn't bother me. Who cares? Yeah. Like, who gives a fuck? Mm. All right. Sarah. Sexy. Well, I think uh, we're going to get some answers from uh, our pal who's no longer with us. It's, om- oh. it's almost been two years, right? Patrice? Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, my God. He did a whole bit on sexual harassment. He did, yes, yeah. So I think that it'll wrap up this whole hour and a half nicely. Nice little package. It's almost two fucking years. Two years, right yeah. around this time. I didn't realize it was the anniversary was coming up. Time to grow the beard again. Fuck, man. Mm-hmm. For my pal Patrice O'Neill. Damn, man. Um, you got that, E-Rock? Yes, I do. All right, we're going to do that. We got one of our favorite people coming in today. I can't wait for Ian Halpern. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait. It's been He's, way uh, too long. He hasn't been on the show in quite a while, but uh, he makes enough of an impact that uh, a lot of people remember who he is, of yes, course. Yes, yes. Ian Halpern, his, uh, his Highness. His Highness Hollywood. His Highness Hollywood, Ian Halpern. In studio for the, the first show. time in probably at least two years. Google it. Yeah. It might be the first time since he brought in the dude with the fake French accent. Oh, remember that guy? <laughs> what a character. I forgot man. about that guy. Uh, and um, maybe some Jocktober, as Jocktober comes to an end in another day oh, or two. Oh, man. They went for the Scott and Todd interview in Tyson. Did you see that? Did anybody see that? Yeah. Oh, People keep Twitter. It kind of went viral, too, man. Why? It CMZ TMZ. picked it up for whatever reason. They asked reason. him about Chris Brown. Oh, oh okay. Jesus Christ. So. Oh. Yeah, Chris Brown throw that throw uh, punch on what? I got a fist on my face. I got a tattoo on my <laughs> cheek. I can't even feel my own nose. <laughs> oh, Tyson punched you in the face. How did that oh, feel, Oh, that wasn't, Scott? Uh, I can't even feel my own nose. Oh, oh, my Is that the guy God. Chris Brown punched? Oh, no, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, why did you, uh, what did you think about Amistad? I want to see the boat movie. <laughs> oh. oh, that's good. We might do a little Scott and Todd today, I think. <clears throat> no, not today. Tomorrow? Oh. Well, oh. what day is today? Today is Wednesday I was the 30th. Planning, I was planning on doing Scott and Todd today. Yeah. But uh-huh. yesterday, when they had Tyson in studio and everything, yeah. Todd wasn't even there. Uh, Whoa. They didn't say he wasn't there, and they still did a phone scam as if he was. <laughs> uh. But he wasn't. All right, so we'll yeah. do something else today? Yeah, I got another show today. And we got to continue with uh, the people we were, we were doing yesterday. And it turn, uh, turns out the, the broad's a fan of ours. Oh. And, and she tweeted about Jocktober. Yeah. She wrote something like, uh, I've been laughing my ass off all month about Jocktober. Oh, no. And then something like, Karma's a bitch. 
Oh God! I forgot the exact tweet. We'll find it after the break. We weren't oh, that boy. mean to them yesterday though, because they nah. were they weren't like nearly as bad as other shows. We weren't that. Yeah, bad. we almost oh. said how hot she was. Yeah, she was cute. And yeah, like, you can't laugh. With some at photos, jokes. she's almost yeah. hot. You know, that's yeah. a compliment. Yeah, and you can't <laughs> <laughs> you can't laugh at Jocktober and then do fake radio bits. And then expect uh, not to, you know. Oh, well, oh, Sam, have a heart. Yeah. Be a Can't. person. I mean, to, to the broadcasters that want to take us seriously or this month, <laughs> <laughs> just stop with the nonsense. Yeah, you don't all... need to do the fake phone calls. You know, do something else with that time. Yeah. It's pretty obvious now. I can't do the phony phone calls anymore. Nah. They're not legal. Wait to hear today's show. Oh, no. All right, we'll do that next, nice. I guess. But first, Patrice O'Neill wrapping up everything uh, we were talking about with sexual harassment. Like, ladies, let's discuss, hey, look, let's discuss harassment for a second. Let's just, see. you feel it a little bit? Like, let's just discuss it. Why can't I harass you sometimes, sometimes? I can never harass you, never. And I'm not talking about hey, oh, ooga booga. Like I'm talking just. At the job, it's unfair that I can't harass you at the workplace. Like. You looking how you looking. And I can't just, a little something that has to do, like you gotta be careful just to say, hey, you look beautiful today. That's how messed up the game is. I think you should be able to comment on any part of the body <laughs> that you see. If you, I'm serious. What's your name? What's your name? Jeannie. Now Jeannie, no disrespect, but if I work with you, I should be able to walk in and go, oh, Jeannie, beautiful uh, titty meat you have there. <laughs> and, because I see that, but whatever the scientific term is, I'm um, looking at Mr. A 4.9 grade point average. What's the, what's the science term for uh, t the titty meat? What's the actual, and it's not the cleavage. I mean, the cleavage is the space in the middle. I'm talking about the meat. The, the meat, the titty part. And I'm not being foul, just, you know, whoa. You know what I'm saying? Just so I can go through the rest of the day without pretending that I don't see. Which, which, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, let's work out a deal. Don't get me fired <laughs> having women work with men right is like having a grizzly bear work with salmon <laughs> dipped in honey like so now you dip the salmon in the honey right grizzly bears and the salmon gets to walk through comfortable with honey and fish and Good morning, grizzly bears. <laughs> and the grizzly bears is like, hey, he can't even, he can't even growl. Like, ah, what's up, fish? <laughs> oh my God, human resources. The grizzly bear just did grizzly bear stuff. So, <laughs> so, Like, I can't even go, hey, good morning. Good morning, fish. Good morning. Oh, I can't touch it. Like, oh, look at that. Oh, let me just get a little bit of that fish. A little bit. Get that honey. Oh, my God. Fish and honey, man. That's my favorite. Usually, I kill fish and eat them and stuff, but I just wanted to just rub that, rub a little bit of that. God damn. That's oppressive. Like, you shouldn't even... And there's cameras everywhere. You can't do, like, weird stuff behind her back. Like... 
Why would it be disrespectful if I said, what's your name? Ter Terrell. If I go, hey, Terrell, we work together. And I go, Terrell, hey, do me a favor. Let me know when you're getting up to go to the bathroom so I can sniff your chair. <laughs> Is sexual, but that keeps me from being like I think. Look, I think there should be a holiday, uh, for lack of a better word, harassment day, but not that sounds whatever. But I mean, a day where I get to find out, like, because and this is why it should be harassment day because women get to be inappropriate sexually all the time. You get to be inappropriate. And when I say inappropriate, I mean say hello to me too close. Hi. <laughs> or some weird massage because you think we're friends and you, good morning, a little kiss. And he's just like, oh, oh boy, oh boy, 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 boy. And you think in your head, man, I wonder if I could, I wonder if I don't know. But <laughs> well, harassment day allows you to be able to ask. All oh, year, I say the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a beautiful day, flowers and everything. You buy a flowers. You just real cool, you walk up, you're respectful, you say, hey, how are you? You know, good afternoon, Terrell, happy harassment day. <laughs> and you just like say, listen, I was wondering all year if you would suck my dick in a boom pot. No, thank you. I'm not. And you'd be like, I'm, thank you. Keep the flowers. I just thought <laughs> I made a mistake. I thought you was a hoe all year. I was confused. I thought you was a hoe, but you're not. The Obi and Anthony Show. The Obi and Anthony Show. Want to wish our pal Kevin Pollack a very happy birthday today. I know oh. he's listening. Really? Listens every day, yep. Happy birthday, Kevin. Does he share a birthday with Henry Winkler? He sure does. Uh, the Fonz is 68 today. 68 for the Fonz, huh? It's been a while. we got to get the Fonz back hey. in here. D, hey, get your reverse mortgage. We had Richie Cunningham last week. we got to get the Fonz back. Certainly did. Oh, I know. Oh, okay. Orson Welles because uh, uh, oh, the Halloween broadcast, the War of the Worlds War aired the world. seventy-five years ago today. Find me a jury. Mm. Crisp crumb coating. Crisp crumb coating. It doesn't roll off the tongue. Crisp crumb coating. And we got the Red Sox winning the World Series tonight. Oh boy, that's well, right. Guaranteed. It is a guarantee. Yeah, it's I, I a picked, lock. I picked this one. It's gonna be my first good pick in many, many years. <laughs> My Your first good... shots all over Boston right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first good pick in many years. Yeah, I think I finally picked the winner. Is this the first time they can win at home since 1918? 1918. 1918. Wow. 18. I remember that. How happy will champs. people be if they, oh. if they lose there? How bad will that be? Oh. I, I hope they run on the field, go old yeah. school. That'd be great. Rip down the green monster. All that shit should happen tonight if they if they uh, clinch at home. There's no way they could lose. Absolutely. It's a lock. It's totally Everyone a lock. knows it. Yeah. Everyone knows it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. No, don't worry. I got this Shut one. Up. I got this one. Opie's got it. I got it. Yeah. I finally figured out my sports curse. It's good. We're good. The best part is it's not a bit because Opie really wants them to win. He's a fan. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. Well, but but we but all between know. between the yeah. two teams, yes, I would I would pick uh, the Red Sox over the Cardinals every every single time. Yes. So, what are you saying the odds are? Of a Red Sox win tonight. It's uh, it's a guarantee. Guarantee, hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right. I don't even need to put odds on it. Heard it here, folks. Yep. What about that new bit we talked about that you guys wanted me to do, but I didn't know if I wanted to do it. Oh, oh no. You ask him. What bit was that, Jim? Shinkles, shinkles conundrums. No, 
I don't think we ever mentioned Schinkel's conundrums. It's braid teasers, teasers for the braid. Uh-huh. Like, uh, before Mount Everest was discovered, what was the highest mountain in the world? Schinkel about it. I'm not going with. Sh- oh, I just really cringed right there. Schinkel about it. You don't, you don't like that? I fucking hate <laughs> Craig Schinkel. <laughs> Why do you do this to us? Oh, oh the, I do it to you. I do it to myself. Twenty-three oh, hours a day. Why God. Does he, why does he do this to us? Oh. He does. He does it to himself. <laughs> I do it to myself all day. Oh, you think it's just here? I walk God. around going Schinkel's conundrums. Oh, that's repulsive. Schinkel I'll bring powder. that to the show. <laughs> Believe me, I live with this. It's awful. <laughs> I live with this. <laughs> Schinkel powder. Schinkel powder. You, maybe it's a point at your head when you say that, too, though. Mm. Shit, hope about it. Oh, well, we could squeeze in Jacktober before His Highness uh, arrives. Are His people this stupid? It says, Opie, they haven't won at Fenway since 1918. They won the series in 2004. Oh. That's so exactly what we said. <laughs> the question was, when was the last time they won at home? They won at home. And the answer is 1918. And Opie said 1918. I know they won the World Series in at 2004, was it? Jayster is a dick bag. Please block him or, or yank him out of the room today. You want me to bounce him? Please, please. Jayster, sorry. You're gone. There he goes. Just listen. Oh, there's plenty of times I fuck up. That's how it happens. They don't like the high voice either, so I, uh, I make sure I use the high voice now. People got to pay. I rule this room with an iron fist. Trust Trust same me. way you rule your asshole. <laughs> Someone else's iron. <laughs> <laughs> you listen long enough, you'll hear me fucking up a lot. But uh-huh. but that one was not a fuck up. Yeah. The question was, when was the last time at home? Exactly. I remember asking that very question. 1918. Right. I'll be watching tonight. 1918. I, I haven't watched a full World Series game. No? No, but I do watch for a few innings. I notice uh, Tim McCarver is just a babbling idiot. Yeah. It's about time he leaves. Is it time for him to... And then uh, Joe Buck down? is looking like a leprechaun or something. <laughs> I don't know. What is he doing? I don't know. He's got really dark, like, reddish eyebrows and really dark hair. Like, These guys get old, you know. He went over the top with his dye job. Oh. I think he might add a little uh, little follicles, too. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah? Make oh, a little well, forehead maybe. front. He did have that giant forehead. Is that? No, that's... Giant. I don't know. He just looks a little creepy on camera because yeah. his eyebrows too dark or something. You'll notice tonight. You'll see. You'll uh-huh. see for yourself. I won't be watching. You won't? No, I don't. I have no interest. It's a in pretty this good World story Series. though that the Red Sox could win at home for the first time. I mean, pretty much for the first time ever. Dumb Al Qaeda beards and fucking. Who acknowledges it, 1918? Yeah. You don't give a turkey, do you? Andrew? I do not give a single turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some knowledge yesterday. They started growing the beards in spring training. I did not know that. Didn't they? Because usually that's like a playoff beard, but it's obvious yeah. that they, they were growing it longer than just the playoffs. But what, they just decided in spring training to just grow beards all year long? Maybe it was a motivator, like, hey, that way when we get to the playoffs and the series, we got these big beards, people talk about it. Right. Mm. I don't like beards. <sighs> Why not? I just think they're very itchy, like they would scratch. Yeah, shinkle about it. Shinkle about it. Oh, I hate the way he says it. He points at his head. Yeah. Shinkle's oh, come nice. under oh. we, we have a couple things. We have Jocktober, and we also have another uh, Mike Francesa thing. Oh, really? At the Daily News Reporter? Well, we never played that. That was fun. They had a little battle. They, yelled, mm. they were yelling and screaming at each other. We never mm. played that, but then we got yeah. the guy that does a great impression of Mike Francesa. We have our own guy that does a great impression of Mike Francesa. It's not the sure. same guy who uh, did the 1776 video. Yeah, now he does like a Civil War one, apparently. Yeah, now he's got a follow-up. It's uh, Mike Francesa discussing the Civil War. It's Francesa through history, it looks like he's going to do. Can we can we hear a little of this? See where it goes? Okay. You don't need the big, long intro. Intro takes fucking forever. It's ridiculous. The battlefields of Antietam. And listen. 
It's probably going to be a small skirmish, not a big deal. That's why we have the <laughs> studio set up. Wait a second, if he's so smart, why is he trampling on the Constitution? Just because you don't like the guy, if he, Mike, doesn't if he's mean a he's a bad lawyer, person, Mike. Why listen, you don't, he, just because you don't like why, the guy... Wait a second, wait a second, wait a minute, wait a second, Mike, Jim, go <laughs> yell you. Let why me is he, wait a second, all right, you know what, thanks for the call, you're gone. I, I'm not going to yell over you, okay? <laughs> when Lincoln got elected, okay, at some point... They decided, oh, we're going to walk around the White they, they became the lords of the White House. They all started you know, wearing these top hats, walking around, oh, we're going to get rid of habeas corpus. Oh, we're going to talk about freeing the slaves. You're not doing any of that. You're in the North. What you have to be worried about is this. Who's going to be on your side? Nobody. The Europeans are going to side with the South. Why? I love he's always on the wrong side. He gets everything <laughs> wrong. They need the cotton. The South has the cotton. Right, we're gonna hold the phones now. First up, we got Dan in Charleston, South Carolina. What's going on, Dan? Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good. What's up? Yeah, I was just wondering if you'd want to hear my top five generals. Oh, real, real excited. <laughs> yeah, All ahead. right. First, I have Alexander the Great. Second, I have Artie Lang. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Why do you even bother? It's not gonna get on the air. I don't know. Does Artie like give you like a gold star or something for doing things like that? I don't understand. Why don't you do something useful with your time? God, I mean, why don't you help somebody? He's good. You, know, you wait on the line. He waited on the line for two hours. Like two hours. That's exactly what he does. Why don't you does? help somebody? Why don't you go help somebody bring back their lost slaves or the runaway slaves or something? Help somebody. Do something nice for a change. God. Something nice. Ooh. The Underground Railroad. What? You know, the Underground I, Railroad. I don't know who, I don't know what that is. <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. The Underground Railroad, Mike, with Harry Tubman. Who? <laughs> All right, made it. Thanks for the call. I mean, listen, folks, you're gonna call up. You're gonna start making things up. You know, making up <laughs> names. Harriet Tubman. What kind of name is that? <laughs> Underground Railroad. Mom, do you ever hear that? I. You know, I I actually was on. You know, I've been actually going on the railroads a lot lately. Actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know who I ran into on the railroad the other day? John Wilkes Booth. Yeah. John Wilkes Booth. I ran into John Wilkes Booth on the railroad. How about that? Great guy. Real, real nice guy. <laughs> he can't stand Lincoln, though. He, oh, he hates Lincoln. Oh. Yeah, I told him, like, you should probably do something constructive about that. Probably do something about that, okay? Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, my father recently passed away, and he really loved his... I'm oh, sorry. Gonna have to cut you off the uh, call back another time. Uh, we now in the general of the union out west, uh, probably the only member of the union that'll come on with me nowadays. Uh, General Ulysses S. Grant. General, welcome to the show. How are you? How are you, Mike? Great to be on. All right, now we're gonna go to uh, Philip in Montgomery, Alabama. What's going on, Philip? Yeah, Mike. How you doing? Good. How are you? I just want to talk a little bit about A Rod for a minute. Uh, <laughs> no, something's been bothering no, we're not, me about. We're not doing that today. We're not doing. We're not doing. We're not taking A Rod calls today. Call back 150 years from now. That won't be late. <laughs> <laughs> the Union and the Confederacy about to square off. Um, now listen. I don't think this will be a major battle. I don't think there will be a heavy loss of life. <laughs> but I do think this is an important battle because I think this will cement the war for Robert E. Lee. This will show everybody, and this will, this will finally shut that clown up that's in the White House about any talks of free and slave. This will be the battle that shifts the tide to the Confederacy. Okay, because once I'll, I'll Robert E. Lee penetrates Maryland, it's all over. It's all over for the Union. Uh, but listen, I can't give you exact play-by-play, -play, okay? I'm not allowed. I'll get in trouble if I give you exact play-by-play -play of what's go going on on the battlefield. Oh, wow. Wow, was that a direct hit? Did he just hit him to... Mons, did it, was that a direct hit with the cannon? <laughs> okay, folks, Robert E. Lee just directed cannon fire towards the center, okay? And that... Wow, what? McKellen refuses to send in the second line. Wow. Wow, but... And listen, I can't do exact play-by-play, -play, but, okay, but, oh, <laughs> why isn't he sending in the second line? 
Yeah, but let's be honest. You you got a little help there. You got a little help towards the end of that battle. That's why you know. I mean, let's be honest. Your your rise to prominence really started because you got help during that battle and what during that struggle. Say, and that's what. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Well, well, don't get sensitive here. Okay? I know you're gonna be a little sensitive. You're gonna be sensitive. I mean, come on, General. You're trying to say I needed help to win I that battle. Wait I think he goes too long with these stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he should probably do them shorter. You, yeah, yeah. But he's a very, he's a great. Oh. I, I'm, I'm guessing Mike likes these two. I'll bet you Mike. He refuses to, to acknowledge them. He I'll says he hasn't. YouTube. He hasn't seen him. He doesn't oh, know. Oh God, no. I don't know what YouTube he, is. He's not. He, of course, he's seen him, but he doesn't want to acknowledge that he's seen him. I don't know what a YouTube. He doesn't. He doesn't watch YouTube. He doesn't. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't no, watch. No. Okay. Guy needs a little better production value too. Yeah. Like he's mic. I kind of like that. It's cheesy. But yeah. he, but he's mic in the room instead of himself. Yeah, he's got a, a fucking. He, he, should, he should at least mic himself. Headset mic. Right. I think our guy does a, a bit of a better Francesa. This guy does a great Francesa. But yeah, the guy yeah. that calls up racist Francesa, uh -huh. I think, does a better pure Francesa. Yeah. Yeah. Even though this guy's good. Yeah, this guy's got like the mannerisms and stuff. Yeah, he cuts a collar off or subtle his dumb subtle smile. Tease, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, I think mm -hmm. we got to go back in a break for live reasons because we went so long. Oh, I hate that. I know it happens, and then oh, we got oh goodness, we got His Highness coming in today for the first time in years. Yep, a couple of years at least. Ian, I think uh, Jim uh, Jeffries is calling in to say hi quickly today, and oh. I think we're going to squeeze in some Jocktober next. Squeeze. <laughs> Show. Oh, yeah. Wait. Getting ready for Jocktober. Let's do some Jocktober. Ian Halpern will be in studio in a few minutes. What is he even, oh, yeah. What is he even promoting? Well, he's, in town, uh, he's in town. He's filming a movie. What's the uh, one movie filming? this one movie time? Is I, did, I did no research on Ian Halpern's yeah. uh, he's in, he's, uh, appearance special. today. He's filming a special. I know last time he was in town two years ago, he was filming a movie about Lady Gaga that he was actually, uh, he's going to put me in, he told me. Nice. Hey, how'd that work out? But he has, I guess he just hasn't gotten to my part yet. Oh, right, okay. But, uh, Did the movie ever hit? Still editing. Or is he still working on the movie? Well, I think he must still be filming. Cause, oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Something. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, no, we got a whole one sheet full of information. Can't wait. Yeah, I see that. I, li I like the one sheet of info on Ian Halpern. Yeah. I want to make sure you I guys actually love it, actually. That way, it's just, it's just something you can... Reference. You can pick off the bullet points to figure out your well, questioning. Uh-huh. Well, for the people who don't know His Highness... His Highness Hollywood. His Highness Hollywood, Ian Halpern. Uh, Ian is an accomplished saxophone player. True. Ian loves black women. <laughs> All right. Ian has lots of sex. He has claimed to have had a threesome with Jill Nicolini. <laughs> <laughs> and sex. Uh, Which we, he always... we are here to say I highly doubt it, by the way. <laughs> and he always started claiming that after he found out Aunt was dating her at the time, which was about three to four years ago. Right, right. Was Ian, it Ian once took a Maybe photo more. nearly nude with Troy in a bed. That's true. When he had yeah. his uh, his bed in, I guess, that no one cared about, Just... in a hotel somewhere with the American flag on the wall. Right. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yeah, course. the press that covered that event consisted of me and Troy. Right. Ian is in town to film a special. We know that. Ian ru routinely gets the scoop. Yep. Ian the has a unique fashion sense. <laughs> Oh, and you, you forgot that he buys friends and women. Hey, look. Yeah, they showed the other one, uh, Fox News. Yeah. Oh, I miss the show. I miss the show on the mic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's taken over. Yeah. Uh, you forgot about that. that he, Ian really doesn't have any friends. And remember the time he brought those two women in, making believe he was partying <laughs> with them all night? And then oh, yeah. We, <laughs> we broke it down, and it turns out he hired them. He yeah. buys friends for the day. The, the one woman that finally admitted it. We got her on the phone. Yeah. Yes. She was an actress right. that he hired off Craigslist. What? <laughs> oh, Many good. people theorize that he has a crush on Anthony Cumia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and Ian once brought a man to the studio with a French accent, but the accent disappeared when he was in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, a fake French accent. I can't wait to see I don't know what him. to make with, of Ian. He's, he's, There's <laughs> nothing to be made of him. He's the man. Just enjoy it. Like, Is that it? Yes. All right. Let's Sam and I are very excited. It's Jack Oh, yeah. A celebration of all things shitty in radio. That's not very nice. Fantastic no, failures of pontificating proportions. Oh. That's so bad. Wow. An interactive exploration of what makes radio rancid. 
Jacktober. OMG. Hosts, holes, bits, and stunt boys. It's time for Jacktober. I want to see the boat movie. Nice. Did we find that tweet from Melissa from yesterday? We took, uh, what was the show? Yet? See, I forgot the show from yesterday already. I believe it was Melissa and Jack. Oh, yeah, Melissa and Jack. We were talking about them yesterday for Jocktober. We didn't finish their little uh, Jocktober segment. And there was actually no. a bit on there I wanted to get to. They skated. Uh, but Melissa, she's on Twitter. She writes, uh, which one was it now? It's uh, this one right oh, here. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm an ONA fan. Been sadly laughing. Cringing at Jocktober, bits all month. Karma, I guess. It's I, I, she writes. LOL. I'm an ONA fan. Been yeah, sadly laughing, cringing at Jocktober bits all month. Karma, I guess. LOL. In response to somebody saying they heard her, <laughs> right. yeah, getting lambasted. Yes. Yesterday. Oh man. <laughs> Wouldn't have assumed a. Oh, it was the entourage thing. I guess we don't have to do that. They went on and on and on and no. on about the fact that entourage is going to be a movie. Oh great. The, the reason that there's three tracks. Yeah. Is because that's the same story. Well. Done three times oh, throughout the same. Right. Don't do show. that. If she's a fan, don't, don't do that. Don't. Yeah. No. And, and, and it's not. It's not. No. Don't <laughs> right, do that. Just don't do that. Roll up the newspaper. Yes. No. Put your face in it. And you won't be on our yeah. radar. Why would you do that? Exactly. Yeah. It was. It, and it's not like they replayed it. It's a one-minute entertainment story that they just did three times in the same show. No. Oh boy! God. As if it was new every time. No, you don't oh, need to do that. Same no. jokes no. sprinkled in. No. Well, today we go to Detroit. That's right, we do. A big fucking bird. The bald eagle. The eagle. Yeah, no shit. It yeah, is. you pet them or are they not friendly? friendly? What? I don't know. When the guy's holding. Oh, it. look at the fox. Thanks, what what does the cat? Oh, a gray fox. Why don't you? Why don't you get one of those for your house? Yeah, that'd be great. A canine cat, it's called. Like you said, it's a yeah, a gray fox. That looks kind of cool. What does he say though? Good. Is that right? And when you're the smallest carnivore, the wolves, oh. the coyotes. All right. Mm -hmm. a stupid animal segment on TV. Oh, Who doesn't God. like a good animal segment? What's he say though? Win 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 He's got a little something, but he didn't go all in. Yeah. Because that would have been uh, like a Philly beard for Big Poppy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, That's a cool. Lynx. The length is nice. That's pretty cool looking. Is that a wild animal? A little. What do you oh, think? Yeah. Look uh, at his face. It has that wild shit animal will, hair. That shit will rip your fucking throat. Yeah, he's a... Uh, Let's get some of these animals in studio. Powerful predators. The lynx. How big do they get, the lynx? I don't think much bigger than I that. I bet that's about truth. it. They're pretty, uh, it's a cat. pretty small. Yeah. No, Look those at are fucking paws. paws. Look at those paws. Oh, huge. my God. That is in the giant. grassland okay. possession drive. So we have uh, Gabe here coming on with oh our, our little African wow. servo. Gabe is yawning. Oh, what <laughs> a pretty People animal. actually you can have see the these difference. at home. Yeah, we talked servo. about the, the big feet and growing into the big feet of the legs. Yeah. With the servo, we've got the giant ears. and those. Yeah. What's a giraffe cat? Oh. Look at how long his little legs are. Uh, they are oh. listening for birds flying. Well, the, uh, these guys aren't friends. I'm taking it. Oh, well, they they actually hissing. are friends, oh. but they play Let's so see, rough. Let's see them play. They play so rough, unfortunately, it doesn't make for good TV, but they do get along. That would make great TV. Of course, it makes great kidding? TV. All right, at least they said that. Good. I have a feeling Amy's out of the show. Oh, they did, yeah. They did say that. <laughs> they did say that. Uh, let's do some Jack Jilbert. Jack Jilbert. We got to start getting animals back on our oh. show. Remember the guy that had the baby elephant waiting out outside? Had, it we, was we couldn't bring in the elevator. I think that guy ended up uh, getting arrested. I think he some, did. Some illegal some fucking shit. crimes against fucking animals. Because, <laughs> hey, man, if you want, I, I have a baby elephant uh, on the street right now yeah. in the truck, but uh, I don't know how to get it up here. Bring him up. Oh, man. I want to pet some animals. Yeah. The toucan. You want to pet the trouser snake, Jim? <laughs> With your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. The... <laughs> <laughs> Give him a whole tongue petting. <laughs> That's a pecker! Ah, Whoa. you're very smart, Chippa. Whoa. <laughs> 
Fucking Jocktober <laughs> sucks. Get That's over it. Blow me. <laughs> Yo, Chippa, oh, kiss right. the anaconda. Uh, Guys, uh, we, we can't do Jocktober today. Why? Oh, no. Because DG Witty writes, of course, just me. I mean, there's other people that show uh -oh. you cunt. Ouch. OP Radio, fucking Jocktober sucks. Get over it. Stop doing it. Oh. It's never funny. This real, is real fans hate it. He says. Oh, okay. He speaks for everybody. This is the um, real fans hate it. The reaction Did that we want really? at the end of uh, October for Jocktober. This is we want everybody fed up with it. Right. So relax, dick big. We go to Detroit today. The day. Detroit's hit music. Channel nine. They call themselves Channel ninety five point five. They call themselves Channel ninety five five. I wonder what the PDs fucking and consultants idea behind that was. You, let's call it a channel because that's different. It's not a radio station anymore. You know, people, everything's on a channel. We don't mind different, but then some of the different is like, yeah. who gives a fuck different? It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. People are either going to listen or not. If the content's there, you could call it fucking shit, shit radio. radio. Yeah, exactly. For, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is absolutely right. But a PD could never imagine to do something sort of like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's uh, time to beat the shit out of Mojo in the morning. Oh, Mojo boy. in the morning. I think uh -oh. there's a lot of Mojos in the morning across America. Is it like uh, I think. Monique and Joe or something? Or No, no, no. His name's Mojo. His name. He's got some Mojo working, huh? Oh, but yeah. Does he got a chick? A little Mojo oh, yeah. rising, right? Oh, yes. Who's the, uh, who are the principal players here? Well, you're talking about Mojo. Oh, boy. Which one is the Mojo? Mojo's right there. Right in the center, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You got Shannon. Oh, who's wow. there to be like, yeah, oh, Joe. Bless, Bless you, sweetie. Fucking flu shot. That, that makes uh, sense. Another one. She, she don't look, like, well, she looks all right. too bad there. But uh, we, we know that uh, chicks in radio can be uh, what they call two faces. And can be a, a bit on the frumpy side. <laughs> something could happen in that next photo. All right. And then, of course, you got your wild man on the loose. Oh, shit. Oh, and that's no. Spike. 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 Oh, God. Spike, why don't you come in here and tell us what you did last night? Oh, man. Whoa. Out uh, there drinking with I'll, my friend. I'll get us all fired if I tell you. I mean, Whoa. my God, man. I can't oh, do that. Spike. I mean, Spike's a little bit of a liability. Get ready on the dump button because yeah. I'm not sure if this is going to fly. Oh. He's a little bit of a liability, but when you want to rely on somebody to really get a good prank out there, mm -hmm. yeah. Spike's your guy. I like it. Although I enjoyed the the Dick Church uh, picture, oh, I saw that yesterday in my own travels. Yeah, aerial shot of a church and looks just like a dick. <laughs> wow, that is fucked up. Okay. Anyway, it's Mojo in the morning. Um, Detroit's hit music. He's the king of the radio bits. This Mojo guy. Oh yeah, I yeah. find him to be. This is like I was thinking about. Uh, Putting together a compilation of all the different bits we featured during the month of October this sure. year. Sure. Mm -hmm. Why bother when you could just listen to Mojo? Oh, all okay. right. He's doing the. All right, Mojo. Because he may or may not be doing every single one. <laughs> well, the first one is uh, the senseless uh, survey. A That's senseless a, survey. This is a new one. This is a, this is a That's staple a good one. radio. The senseless. What? what? The senseless uh, ah, survey. Did you say census or senseless? Senseless. Ah, ah that's funny. Because remember when the different. census was a thing? Yep. You're in your car and you just start yelling at your radio. Who gives a fuck? Hey, people wait for these benchmarks. You think? Yeah. It's oh. time for an official government survey. It's Mojo in the morning senseless oh. survey. Production. Hello. Hello, sir. This is Mr. Dabalinacon from the U.S. Census Bureau. How are you? It's funny. I'm uh, fine. Good. We got your census form in the mail, the one that you mailed out to us a few months ago. Yes. The... He doesn't sound like a mojo. No, that's Spike. Ah. He don't sound like a he Spike. He don't sound like a Spike. Ooh, what does he sound <laughs> like? Spike has to be more, you know. Yeah. Fuck. Hey, oh, look out, look out. Can't even believe I made it to work this morning. Whiskey and cigarette that's voice. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A few months ago? Yes. The back page, there was two questions left blank. Can I just ask you those two questions really quickly? Yeah. First, starting with, how do you feel the U.S. economy is shaping up? Mm, that's a good question. Poor. <laughs> and how many times this year have you been struck by lightning? What? Oh. None. 
And finally, have you ever used a post-it note to remind you to buy more post-it notes? Oh. <laughs> no. And are you more lovey-dovey or schmoozy-woozy? Ah, <laughs> that's a good one. Woozy-goozy. <laughs> and, sir, what is your favorite curse word? <laughs> All right, perfect. What did he say? Can I say this, though? That's the most convincing guy on the, on the line that I've heard, though. <laughs> the other guy really sounds like a real caller yeah. by the way he's answering these mundane, awful questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Senseless questions, you mean. Senseless. But, I mean, there, if, if he's a, a fake, he's actually a really good fake because he just sounds yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's not really good, though. It's boring as all fun. Yeah, yeah that's it couldn't not be more a good boring. bit. These but, are less uh, conundrums. Ah, yeah, just like him. Right. <laughs> Being that census uh, surveys are so topical, and this is going so well. Ah, we continue? You gotta continue. Yeah. And when's the last time you had a good pillow fight? Uh, I guess about five weeks ago. And have you created my a grandmother? Blog she was on her about... back and I <laughs> put one over her face and I won. <laughs> I won her inheritance. <laughs> and have you created a blog to write about your favorite Supreme Court justice? Ugh. No. And just the last two questions, which would you rather have, six of one or half a dozen of the other? Oh, my God, this wow. is awful. So terrible. What are you doing? Uh, it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> Go on, Jim. Uh, uh, a little terrible. Word, having uh, fun with wordplay, are you? Uh, well, it's just senseless. Wordplay is fun. Six and a half. And if an angel gets his wings every time a bell rings, what happens when a foghorn blows? I guess fly away. I'll say I'll say I get cum in my mouth. <laughs> Cartoon humor. No, but it just the absurdity of hearing that from a fucking a grown up. Yeah. It just struck me like, this I is know. our job. Right. <laughs> I am the worst. Um, no, but that was perfect uh, at work. <laughs> now now we got a a, a real problem. What? On our hands, the yeah. the one guy on Twitter, I already forgot his fucking Twitter handle. Oh, said real fans don't like October. Yeah, well, yeah. Now I got a guy. It's uh, uh -oh. E I H T on uh -huh. Twitter. He writes, "Real fan here. I love October." Now what do so we do? So now what do we do? Because the other guy said the real fans don't like October, and this guy's saying the real fans do like October. Uh, more importantly, the fans of the show that we're featuring, Mojo in the Morning, uh -huh. are even stranger than ours. There's a photo on their Facebook, right? And it appears to be. Oh I don't know my if this god! Is a wow, this, or... this is a October mashup. This could be legit. This yeah. looks to be. Dennis Falcone, who's in great shape, yeah. uh, having sex with Terry Clifford That's from behind. Yes, son yes. Son of a bitch. I was suspicious uh, wow. the whole time with this guy. According to this photo, it looks like Dennis Falcone and I'm Terry Clifford sure. are engaged. I'm not sure. It's a very good job, but I, it might be photoshopped. Really? You got to yeah. kind of say that, yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. Maybe. No, you don't really, but it just, it's just such a ludicrous <laughs> fucking square picture. <laughs> pasted over people's faces. The heads are the same size oh, as the body. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Get photoshopped. Get cheap. <laughs> All right. Days. And if you had a vanity license plate, what would it say? This is still going, huh? Bob. Bob, have you checked to see if that's available? Uh, I can't get it. Somebody already has it. Somebody already has Bob? Get out of here. So I got somebody coming to do it. Oh, go, go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> There's no one coming oh, to his no. door. I think, Dude, I think that was actually me. a real caller. Huh? Could have been. They might have snuck that in. Send us questions and Spike will use them. Oh, God, will he? He will use your questions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes these radio shows do take the chance and squeeze yeah. in a real That guy a was too good to be an actor, but, man. But, you know, the bit itself reason. stinks. Who yeah. cares? You want to combine a good bit with real people. Or how about you, you have to kind of, like, not just ask the question, then you have to kind of go with it a little bit, right? Yeah, or and interact with the guy. Actually ask uncomfortable questions, right. not half a dozen in the other? You guys remember Melissa and Jack, and Melissa's a, a fan of the show. Two American just... kids growing up in the heartland? No, 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 no. Oh. Jack and Diane. Oh, right. Sorry. Melissa and Jack is different. Jack Sorry. and Diane in the morning. Forgot that. You know it's out there somewhere. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Melissa and Jack, and Melissa is a fan of the show, and blah, 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 and she's bummed that we uh, oh. took, took shots at her. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. That's a teeny a micro penis. Micro penis. Micro Sucked penis. into a big fat belly. With a lot of... Uh, Christ. What is it called? The pubis fat? The... Fatty pubis. Fat. <laughs> the fatty pubis. What's the pubis fat called? 
pubis fat. I don't know. Was there a dumb name uh, for that? Probably is. Ah, some type of uh, uh, yeah, fatty pubis. That's when the fat cells coagulate <laughs> and they become liquefied and they solidify inside <laughs> your skin. <laughs> no, it was a pouch. <laughs> a pouch. <laughs> a pouch of a fatty pubis, <laughs> which is what my mustache is made out of. <laughs> the hairs that grow under a fatty pubis. I use those, then I use worm semen to glue them to my face. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, remember Melissa and Jack? They were doing that um, that second date bit. Yeah, yeah. And if Melissa is, truly is a fan of ours, and if she's mm -hmm. listening right now, just do us a favor and just don't do that bit anymore. Just please. drop it. Start there. That was their alternative to War of the Roses. Well, right. don't do War of the Roses either. And remember we said that, I bet you this is a bit that a lot of radio shows are doing, the second date bit? Uh-huh. Well... Just no. In just in case you didn't believe us yesterday. Uh. It's the second date update on Mojo in the Morning. Uh. Right, so and they can't even, this is what drives me nuts. They can't even, like, make it their own by just changing the name of it. Right. Nothing. Oh. Oh. That one ounce of originality. That, that's terrible, man. Why? Why? A second you, you make date it to Detroit Radio. That's yeah. a big market, and you're you're doing these shitty bits that everyone else is doing. Why would you do that to yourself? I bet the second date bit people uh, don't allow you to change the name. Probably because oh, they it's... want it to become a big thing so they could sell it to other. It's stations. branded. Oh yeah. Well, as a PD, I would say no. Thank you. We don't need any of these branded fucking bits. And I, then I you just to... do them yourself. <laughs> well, or, or rip them off yourself. Well, <laughs> well creativity, you, you you spin shit and make it your own. Yeah. That's the key to creativity. People yes. are all influenced with uh, people that came before them, but if you're just completely ripping them off, that's horrible. Your but own idea. But you're influenced and you spin it and make it kind of your own. Then it's unique. Why can't a PD um, hire some, some radio people and they go, I have confidence in my guys that we don't need these branded bits? Oh, they did. If you're going to do a bit, make original, how, about a, the, how can they not have... But you could say, okay, radio stations are doing the second date bit. What could we do here in Detroit? And then you, you, you throw it around a little bit and figure something out. Yeah. Like, like say you had a guy who had brain teasers. I don't know who you're talking about. Maybe. They do something like... Uh, oh, no. Uh, uh, Shakel's conundrums. No. What word of the English language is always spelled incorrectly? Shakel Bowery. So anyway, they do second date uh, just like Melissa and Jack do. Is the answer incorrectly? It's the second date update on Mojo in the Morning. All right, so a second date update here. Danny sounds like actually had a pretty good date. Matter of fact, Danny, how many dates did you get with, uh, with Megan? Oh, I had two with Megan, but that was three weeks ago. Oh, okay, so you haven't talked to her then in three weeks? No, but it was two days in a row. It was really weird. The first day, uh, we went out for dinner, and then the following day, like, we, we touched base, and she came over to my place, and we hung out and watched a movie. So I thought things were moving, you know, really, really freaking fast. And then three weeks go by. Now, hmm. you also told us that she spent the night with you. Was that on the first date or the second date? The second date. <sighs> What was the the spending the night thing? Was that intentional? Did you guys were you guys fooling around with each other, or what was the deal? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. It's always on the back of everybody's mind, isn't it? Like, yeah, but, it's the same yeah, guy. I mean, it, it happened on the second. Sounds day. like the same Sounds guy. Like him. What? No. No. Okay. No. This. Oh, you mean it's the other date call? It yeah, sounds yeah. exactly oh, like maybe. the guy like from the yesterday. Same guy from the other date call. Right? Are we playing back to back? I thought you meant something else. Yeah. And then. Um, yeah, and then they don't even inject inject their own personalities into these fucking bits everyone's doing. No, so no. it might as well be the exact same station. Why would you hire Time people? Time for the sake of it. All right, hold on. So you're thinking You think you'd want to hire some Hold on. Syndicate the same morning oh, show. Okay. This is from yesterday. Second date playback on 1037 Play. Oh, Second date here? is where we attempt to help you with your love life. Sometimes you go on what you thought was a great first date, only to have the person not call you, not text you afterwards, just completely ignore you. And that's where we come in. We actually put them on the radio, and we try to get them to tell you what went wrong and why they haven't called you back for a second date. Good morning, Craig. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. good. All right, Craig, so tell oh, us boy. what happened. So this girl that comes into the bar where I, I bartend. I would say different already. Yeah. Different. All right, let's... Good date. Matter of fact, Danny, how many dates did you get with, uh, with Megan? Oh, I had two with Megan, but that was three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Huh. And she has been... I guess I guess you would say hounding me for like the last two months. So you haven't talked to her then in three weeks? 
No, but it was two days in a row. It was really weird. The first day uh, we went out for dinner, her friends have also been mentioning it. She's just been really... Yeah, they're different, yeah, it's different, different guys. It's hard to tell, too. The phone tonality yeah. is different, but... Um, yeah, so... Yeah, they're different. So whatever happened there, I didn't listen. So now they get the broad on the phone. All oh, right, just like that's yesterday. where it gets crazy. Well, I, I have to let you know, she is safe. We were able oh. to get in, get in touch with her and got her on the phone. So she is alive, and there is... Wait, what? why is this guy calling that guy? What's the premise yeah, there? Because yeah. yesterday, remember, it was a friend. Oh, uh, yeah. The guy called up and said, you know, his date had gone poorly, and now he doesn't know... He said, I don't even know if the girl's safe because she hasn't called me in three weeks. So now the guy's just going to call the girl. The mojo is just going to call the girl. But how would he already... We got a hold of the girl if they didn't even know they were taking this call yet. Right, there's no setup as to <sighs> Do how you understand what I'm on. saying? Yes. So like, there's no justification for him no. calling. Right, so the, the that's why I got confused. The guy called and saying, yeah, I had a horrible second date or whatever. And then this guy's like, well, she's okay. We got a hold of her. But why would you get a hold of her if you didn't take the call yet? Exactly. They put no work into it. There's no writing. There's no nothing. Oh, boy. A reason why she hasn't been calling you back. And we're going to mm -hmm. find out exactly what's going on this morning. Say hello, uh, if you can, Megan, to Danny, who uh, is worried about you. Um, hello. Oh, boy. To us. Um. Hey. Normally, this is awkward. This is really awkward. This is very this awkward. <laughs> it's uh, awkward because it's not believable. Cause cause at least you're admitting. Oh, you're not admitting that? Oh, Poorly you just acted. think it's awkward? Yeah. Very <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Megan, Danny yeah. uh, was worried about you because he was worried about your safety because he hadn't been able to get in touch with you in the last three weeks. That's not true. He was just wondering why you haven't called him back in Oh, three boy. Weeks. Right to the point. Um, well, to be honest, I noticed something about his car that just turns me off. Oh, body in the there trunk. something about yeah, what? A, miss, a missing passenger yeah. seat and handcuffs. Something about Smell his of car that from turned the you off. Yeah. Okay. And what was it about his car that turned you off? His license plate says... Ass man? Studly... Limit. Wait, when what? You broke up there. Say it again. His license plate says Studley, and then the number one. <laughs> He's got Studley a vanity one. plate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets Studley for themselves? Come on, that's so cheesy. Danny. See, they don't even believe their own premise of that. No, that's their no. that, that's their own brain slipping. Yeah, they're like, ah, <laughs> oh, who, who who would get that? Huh? They're getting right. mad at the intern who wrote this unbelievable script. <laughs> Come on, that's so cheesy. Danny, is that true? Do you have the? Do you have a license? Is your license plate Studley? And then, a, what the number one? Some bad acting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. See, if it follows what you said the other day. The yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you don't know really what to say as an actor there. First of all, there are license plates that don't even get close to being studly one that are rejected. A state wouldn't allow studly as as a fucking plate. Exactly. You just don't do that. Mm. Mojo in the morning. <sighs> Chris Nina. Good morning, Mojo. Good morning. I what do you, what? you about the, the, the whole vanity license plate thing, but that's not a reason to break up with someone. Right. So what I'm thinking is that studly one just wasn't studly in bed. Oh, okay. Oh, ah. oh boy. bad. Me <laughs> Megan? Yeah. Anything you want to tell us about that? Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily disagree. Okay. okay. She's trying to be uh, trying polite, to be polite about it. Now she's being polite. She wasn't calling him back, but... I stopped breathing, I guess. I know, I'm just like... I don't even understand what happened. It's the second date, dude. But who's the other broad? Some caller. Some they caller? went to the phones and said, hey, let's, let's talk to the callers about if you think Studley One oh. is a bad license. <laughs> and then the caller figured out that, oh, maybe he just sucks in bed. And then yeah. she goes, well, I wouldn't disagree with that. And they went, Ooh. Oh, God. I'm kind of glad it's October's. I am really over. glad it's winding down. Nice. Although tomorrow. Yeah. Gang. We look at ourselves. Oh, oh, we turn the old camera oh, around. Yeah, we I do. forgot that. And we look do at this our every own. year.
Our own douchebaggery. Just to show everyone that in the end, it's just fun. Come on, <laughs> just having a right? good time. Yeah. Please do it early. Cause I have to leave a little early tomorrow. Please no do it early. Oh. I, I don't, don't want to miss it. Yeah. I, I told the guys I don't even want to know what they picked. So yeah. I, it's going to be a complete surprise oh, what God. what horrendous, stupid radio thing we did <laughs> oh, in the past boy. that they picked for uh, the conclusion of October tomorrow. Um, oh boy. Well, time for another uh, Mojo original. Oh, no. Original. Yep. A little bit he likes to call. He likes to call mm -hmm. the phone scam. Come oh. <laughs> <laughs> on. No. All right. So let's, this shit writes itself. Let's tally it up so far. Uh -huh. We started with Senseless Survey. Right. Which we hear <sighs> once a while. We moved on to the second date update. Right. Which we've heard from uh, Jack and Melissa yesterday. Now we move to phone scam. Right. Phone scam. As we uh, look at Mojo in the Morning in Detroit for today's October. It's a Mojo in the Morning phone scams. Bruce just got a brand new fridge. Uh, but when the guys delivered the fridge, uh -oh. they didn't want to take the old one away. So he had to tip the guys. And he's still mad about it. So Spike's scamming him this morning. It's Mojo in the Morning. What's the premise? Uh, Something about a refrigerator. And what? He had to tip the guy just so the guy would take his old take refrigerator? It How much happy. that? What is that? A lousy 10 bucks? Why now, is this an issue? Now, now, you, convoluted. <laughs> now you watch. They're going to call him up. And it's going to be, they're demanding more money or something, I bet. Or, what? Oh, he's going to be mad, whatever it is. Phone scams. Love Ew. a good phone scam. Yeah, how you doing? I'm looking for Bruce. This is Mickey Goldmill. More f Mickey Goldmill. Oh, yeah, Bruce. Bruce, how you doing? Uh, more Mickey jerky Goldmill boys. from... Clients. But he I'm ripped about... it off from Todd. I bet he right. ripped it off from Todd, who ripped it off yeah, from... Yeah, no, he has a wacky name. Well, he's not that bad. What's his name? Gold Mickey mill. Gold mill. Mickey Gold mill, but he said it with that name. Mickey Gold mill. Hey, yeah, jerky, look. And all these losers probably look up to the king loser. Todd. Todd. And, go. and go, oh, fuck, we gotta be just like Todd. Get Brett Weir, <laughs> I said. Right. We gotta get a crazier name. That's like hey, what? Hey, how you doing? This is McBoobies McDuffie Snuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, uh, I went down to buy a trophy and they put a cake on my head. <laughs> I don't know what to do with a cake on my head. <laughs> Crazy! I can't believe you keep people on the phone for stuff like this. Yeah, hey, hey how you doing there, there oh, Turkey? Who, who's who's this? Hey, this is uh, hey, this is Ankles Ankles Stoodlebuckle. <laughs> how do you spell that? Ah, uh, A N K L S Stoodlebuckle. And uh, I went down to your store the other day, and the old lady put uh, put socks in my wig. Socks in your wig? Yeah. Well, that doesn't sound like something that would happen here. Yeah, well, it did happen there, there, jerky. <laughs> jerky. What was your name again? My, my name is Ankles McStoodle Snocks. <laughs> <laughs> this is just how those dumb fucking calls go. Mickey Goldmill from uh -oh. Alliance. I'm calling about the delivery oh, wait, you had at your house. Us? Yeah. Wait, I might be wrong. Huh? Is Mickey Goldmill? No. I'm thinking it's Mickey from Rocky. But oh, his name no, might have been Goldstein. Goldstein or Gold. Are you Gold. sure? Yeah. I'm thinking Goldmill. I could be wrong. Wow, that would be a good Gold. That might be just the name of... Uh, but that would be oh a way to get God. your fake names, Nick, right? Images from Mickey Goldmill. Yep. It was Mickey Rocky. Goldmill. Okay. Oh. Jesus, Jimmy. Good fucking call. Good one. Uh, yeah, this is Bruce. Bruce, how you doing? Uh, Mickey Goldmill from Alliance. I'm calling about the delivery you had at your house last month. You had okay. some of my workers remove your old fridge? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Okay, well, I'm calling because that was an illegal thing to do. Uh, they weren't supposed to move your fridge. And I uh, kind uh -oh. of calling to say I don't appreciate you. You're not supposed to bribe our workers with cash. Well, well, hey, now, listen. None of your paperwork said anything about removing a Sub-Zero fridge. And thank goodness your workers were gracious enough to help me out. But it didn't say anything in the paperwork about that. What did it say in the paperwork about you bribing my employees? No, what do you mean bribing my employees? Is that what you're going to get into? What, you got a receipt? A receipt for what? Exactly. Oh, I see. So you're saying you didn't pay them. Okay, so if you didn't pay them, how come the fridge is back in my warehouse? The fridge is back in your warehouse because that's what your ad said you do. 
You'd come out, you'd take my fridge and deliver the old one. No, if you read the whole ad, it says uh, restrictions do apply. You, well, we don't your do it for. Salesman first... didn't say restrictions do apply. Well, your and fridge your is. Paperwork a... didn't say that restrictions do apply. But your fridge is a sub-zero. It's way too big, and we don't accept this. Well, wow, that's not my problem. Then you should advertise. That it right is up. your problem. I one of my workers, sub-zero. my worker well, Willie has. Zero. What do you think I'm replacing it with? Jesus. Oh, boy. Uh, the guy on the phone is good, though. Yes, the guy is... on the phone sounds yeah, like a real Yeah, at least he sounds. The, the guy yeah, from the radio station is doing a horrendous terrible, job. Terrible. It's not funny. It sounds like a phone right. call. Right, right. Right. And that's yeah. terrible. It, there's no humor to this. None, None whatsoever. I, I, I couldn't change the channel fast oh, enough. Oh, gosh. Why would you sit through this while you're in traffic? Yeah, what's the prank? You gotta put some crazy ideas in there. <laughs> like what? Hey, I go to the refrigerator and there was a bunch. There was a bunch of bees zipping around in there. Oh. I said, hey, what are you doing there, uh, fettle chest? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know who I'm speaking with hey, here. Hey, this is, this? is uh, Mickledoodle Wigwam. <laughs> Mickledoodle Wigwam. I was in your store. And I got a refrigerator, and there was a bunch of bees zipping around oh. in it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. They stung me two million times. Two, two million. million. All over my snookaduk. Over. Oh, that's funny. Now my funny. snookaduk's all swollen. A little over exaggeration and a funny name for a cock. That's good stuff. Yeah. That's oh, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is Hecklemonic Wigwam. <laughs> It's funny and believable. <laughs> Look, if someone waves cash in front of your face and you don't have money, you'd take it, right? Oh, give me a break. Listen, you got a receipt for that cash? Did they say that I did anything? Did they say they did something wrong? They did said they you guys gave them really 20... Nice guys. They provided me good service. I really appreciate it. I don't know what you're trying to pull here. Okay. I have all the contracts from my sale. You've got four guys here in the warehouse... Wrong. Four different guys that say you gave them 20 bucks each to move the fridge, and now poor Willie's seen the doctor six times since he made your service call. Give me a break. What about when Willie said, hey, sir, we cannot move this refrigerator. If my boss finds out, I'll get in trouble. What did you say? Your response was, I'll give you 20 bucks. Well, you know, I'm sorry Willie seems to be working for an asshole, but that's your problem. <laughs> oh, Whoa. that's a really great <laughs> attitude to have. You know, Willie has three children at home. Yeah, well, maybe his boss should take good care of him. No, clients didn't hurt his back. We have rules in place so this doesn't happen, but you tried to bend the rules. Mm-hmm. Well, then, then I guess that's your problem, all right? I didn't no, it's rules. your problem, because I'm going to give Willie your home phone worry. number. And you oh, can yeah, call sure. him. That'll work out real good, won't it? Yeah, and you could pay his medical bills, because we're not paying him. You can take me to court, okay? Willie that's said it's a sub-zero it. fridge. He wasn't supposed more to touch it. I'm than happy to take this to court. You think because you have more money than Willie, you can boss him around and do whatever you want? Hey, this isn't about Willie. This is about you being a p- So oh, what, I got to bring it to, into court? I got to sue you? Is that it? I'd be happy to meet your ass. Of course. Oh, you got his money to I burn. all over you. You know, Willie was also emotionally upset because your wife kept hitting on him and saying inappropriate that, things. Oh, Your wife said right into his ear, please you know phone scam my husband on the Mojo the on the Morning around. Show. I I'll oh. have my lawyer call you. Rather than the other way around. But he said You it didn't already. even hear what I said. He yeah. said, please phone scan. Yeah, he didn't because you delivered well, it horribly. What happened? Of course he didn't hear it. You got to deliver that better. Oh, yeah? Like, how would you do it? How you doing? This is Tootsie Toes McBrabootle. <laughs> Brabootle. Tootsie Toes? Yeah, I was in your store, and I bought a bunch of tires. Right. But they gave me ice cream. What, what, no, there's no ice cream here, sir. That didn't happen. They put ice cream all over my face, and now I can't feel it. That wouldn't have happened, sir. Yeah, that did happen. What's your name? My name is Tootsie Toast McBrabootle. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even hear what I said. I said, Ouch. please phone scam my husband on Mojo in the morning. What? And you're on Mojo in the morning. Oh, the big laugh. Your wife turned you in. Well, isn't that a bunch of bull? Oh! <laughs> oh. We will oh, no, no. We will scam you. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. They Mojo did not. That's Todd. That's Todd. That's Todd. Is Todd ma- recorded that? It that, that's certainly Todd. is. I wrote that and recorded it. Maybe, and I sell it. Maybe Todd has a little side business where maybe he's allowing the yeah. phone scans to go to other radio stations. Todd, he might, giving him Todd does have a, a syndicated comedy. He yes, might I be do. the phone scam guy. Yeah, but is it is is it Todd who did it? 
Or is it a different name? I syndicate it. Oh. oh. I sell it out for business. Well, <laughs> Why do you talk like that? What's the, bu what's the name uh, on the business? The business is Wackadoodle McNoshnooksk. <laughs> Wackadoodle. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is Booby McHooters. <laughs> and I was in your store. Name's Booby? Booby McHooters. Uh, <laughs> what are you, what's your name over there, cool guy? I'm not gonna tell you, Booby. Well, are we done with October? Well, we got one more track. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So far, we've heard uh, "Senseless Survey." Uh, right, I remember that. We heard the um, the second date bit. Legendary. Second date update. A couple original bits there. A third original bit. The phone scam. The phone scam. Very original. And uh, proud to say that mm -hmm. Mojo in the morning finally doing a bit. That no one else is doing. All right, yes. an original. This so, is theirs. I hope it's the on-air suicide. So, <laughs> we're gonna listen to this <laughs> with an open mind, Mojo. Because right. we asked. I hope the, they record it with an open mind, <laughs> like Jimmy just said. Because <laughs> we asked these radio guys to at uh -huh. least do original stuff. Yeah. And start there at least. Okay. So yeah. we got an original bit, and we'll see how well he does it. Let's let it okay? go. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm. I'm in. Uh, all right, so Megan, you you are suspicious of your brother-in-law. Catherine, you don't seem as suspicious. <laughs> Catherine, are you okay with us? No. Making a phone call to him to see where he sends a dozen free roses. No. <laughs> no. All right, Megan um, and Catherine, hang on the phone for one second, and we're gonna see what Come on. what happens. We're calling Come on. Catherine's husband. Come we're on. Hoping that he sends the flowers to her. There's no way. No way. <laughs> what? That's been done before? Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> oh, it's so <laughs> satisfying to expose these fucking hack radio shows. They're yeah, in De and they're in Detroit. They should know better. Do you know what this show calls it? What? what? It's called yep. War uh, of the Roses. Wow. Yeah. Do you have any of it? I, do what? we have some of it? I would like to hear the fake acting. It is one of my really? favorite parts. The, yeah, the guy goes, I was ready oh, to... the exasperated guy. Oh, 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 no. well, oh is... I did, honey. This is unorthodox because yeah. I was going to dramatically uh, destroy oh. the disc. I know, but when she goes, oh, my God, I can't believe it. He's like, oh, well, but I, oh, but I'm so, but I'm so. And she's all mad and it's suspicious. Catherine, are you okay with us making a phone call to him to see where he sends a dozen this. free roses? Uh, I people know. know. I was ready yeah, to stop this. I'm sorry. I have a problem. Right, I have Megan, to hear it. Um, and Catherine, hang on the phone for one second. Hang I want to see there. what, make a phone what call happens. For you. We're calling Catherine's husband. Yeah. We're hoping that he sends the flowers to her. God, I, I wish it was the guy that we talked to. Will you uh, recognize uh, his voice? Oh, a little tangerine dream. I like yeah. that. Train, risky business? Yes. Yeah. Hello. I'm looking for Tony. Yeah. Hey, Tony, how are you this uh. morning? Okay. Good. My name's Nicole. I'm calling from an internet floral company. See, uh, I. I uh, He's doing the exact same thing we talked about last week, uh -huh. where he's already on guard because he's no, uh. he knows he's playing the part of a guy <laughs> okay. that's got to be on guard. Right, right. Eventually. Like, who answers the phone like, like hello? Uh, uh, He's, like, so uh, suspicious okay. already. He hasn't let his character get to where it's supposed no. to be. Right. No. Yeah, just act, act like a regular dude, and then you'll get to that suspicious shit. No, he's got to start right off. <laughs> right, because he's a bad actor. So you guys stupid. don't know what's oh. funny. Oh. Well, I always tell him, act like you're scared right away. Pick up the phone and act crazy. <laughs> hello? Act and, scared. And come up with a good name. Always mm. come up with a funny name. Yeah. Like, who's, hey, who's this, this, sir? Who's this? Hey, this is Harry McBarber. <laughs> That's funny, see? Yeah, Harry and Barber work together. It's very funny. Okay. I was in your barber shop, oh. and you cut my hair with a lawnmower blade. And I want my money back. That wouldn't have happened, sir. It did happen. <laughs> it did happen. And if you don't believe me, you could ask my grandma. Who's she? Mom's booba looking nooks. <laughs> Mom's booba looking nooks. Well, we never would cut someone's hair with a lawnmower blade, so I'm going to hang up, sir. Yeah, well, you did cut my hair with a lawnmower blade and my eyebrows. Uh, and I was on Easter Island, and one of them statues started talking, and I do a radio show with him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a giant rock head in the room. Is this a phone scam? Ah, 
Wow. Oh. 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 I want to hear some. You some... want to hear more bad acting? Oh. Yeah. Called rosesbloom.com with an offer for some free flowers for you. You have like 20 seconds to answer two quick survey questions for me. Oh. Uh, I'm, uh, no, I'm on my way to work right now. Oh. Uh, you can you can do it in the car. It's just two questions, and then we're going to give you a dozen long stem red roses. We won't ask you for any sort of credit card info or anything. I don't even have a credit card to use right now. So. I'm not going to ask you for it anyway, so that's okay. Do you have somebody that you'd want to send some flowers to? Any special occasions? Is this a... How'd you get the... How'd you get my number, first of all? You actually uh, probably purchased something from one of our sister companies, and we all share information, that's all. Two quick questions. That's it. Okay. All right. Ugh. Okay, Tony. Have you purchased flowers in the last six months? No. And do you plan on purchasing flowers in the next six months? No, not really. <laughs> okay, that's it. Like I said. Why would that matter? It doesn't. But, it, that's so you could try to throw off the fucking listeners. Oh, Christ. This says, guy well, thank you for participating in that quick survey. Rosesbloom.com, that's the name of our company, is going to provide right. you with a dozen free roses. And I'm just going to need the name of the person you want to send them to, their phone number, and we're going to send them a, a text. Uh, let's say you are cheating. Uh, okay. Let's really break let's, this down. Let's, let's say, you, say you are cheating. Uh-huh. You could buy your own stupid fucking flowers exactly. for your side piece. Sure. Why would you take that chance Why ever? Why would you take the chance that you're being set up, that you don't know who this shit. is? It's very vague. It's, uh, it's not like it's a new car. So it's stupid flowers. And by the way, this happens every day in many, many cities across the country, <laughs> yes. apparently. Guys are willing to do this. This right. guy's name should be Tony Pepperoni. <laughs> hey, this is Tony Pepperoni. Tony I was in your pizza store the other day, and they gave me hamburgers in my shoes. Uh, sir, we wouldn't ever do that. And I fell down the stairs and my hamburger shoes fell off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen there, Smirky. A little update? Yeah. The uh, wall, the public wall on their Facebook page has been taken down. Oh, why? We didn't shit. even mention it. Yeah, I don't know why. We didn't even fucking why. mention their Facebook page. No. I don't know why. I'm going to send them to their phone number, and we're going to send them a, a text message basically saying, you sent them flowers. They can go on our website and pick out their arrangement and schedule their delivery time. Sound good? All right. <clears throat> they don't get charged? Nobody gets charged? Nobody gets charged, I promise. All right. Okay? Uh, so who would you like to send some flowers to? Uh, Sarah uh, Sarah. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay, before I get her phone number, you can also, um, we can also include a message uh -oh. with the text. Did you want to include something, or we can just say that they're from you? Is his wife supposedly listening? Yes. yes. So why, why wouldn't... Well, she's got to hold on for the, you know, the message. Because and... she's looking at her script going, All right. oh, this is where I come in. <laughs> why she's going to get mad. Why wouldn't they at least have her come in immediately? Oh, boy. So you make the name Sarah Lee, and you send her a cake. <laughs> That's a funny one, too, right sure there. Did. Hey, this is Sarah Lee, and I was in your cake store. What happened? I, they gave me a bunch of rocks in my hat. That never would have happened here at the store, sir. It happened to me. <laughs> Don't you tell me, Nurky. <laughs> <laughs> I fell down the stairs, and my rock hat fell off. Oh, sorry. Maybe I'll sue you. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. You know, I, my partner... Looks like he's having a stroke all the time. Oh, Jesus. He got a big, fat rockhead face that don't move. Oh, my. <laughs> put happy belated, put happy belated sweetest day on that. Okay. And just for our records, what is this person's relation to you? Uh, she's a good friend. Okay. Uh, uh you would go, why do you need to know that? Yeah, for right, what record? Right. For the record? Right. You're keeping a record of this? This is bad news. Why isn't the wife jumping in yet? That's the whole <laughs> bid. If you're going to do the fake bid, fucking do it right. <sighs> no one would sit around waiting. Uh, we also need to mention to you, Tony, while we are on the phone with you and getting some information, that while we've been talking to you, that your wife, Catherine, heard every single word what? you just said. I can't believe you would do this again. Uh, again. Oh. What? 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 Hello? 
Yeah, see, that's the Anthony thing. No, Hel no, no, Hello? But I did. Uh, uh, maybe she means an actor. I can't believe you would do this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> that's the Anthony thing, though. They all do that. Because they fumble, and they go, oh, that's right. I got to say something. <laughs> I got to uh, say something. Uh, right. but what? Hello? What is uh, it? Yeah. What is it? Your wife, Ka your wife Catherine, is on the phone with us right now and just heard every single word you um, just said. You know that I've been calling my sister a liar, that I've been defending you? Uh -oh. I uh, cannot even believe it. So he Catherine, he actually hung up, he actually hung up he the hung phone. Up the phone. <laughs> oh, boy. Why did he hang up? Is that that same girl, Catherine? Yes, it is. Listen, her fake crying. Uh, yes, it is. That's fucking sad, man. Yeah, I know. It's not real, Chip. It don't worry. So don't worry, Chip. It's on the radio. And then, and then they play their part uh, where, they, where they feel bad. It's going down, but they created the whole uh, fake situation yeah, for public enjoyment. <laughs> right? It's yes, like... yes. As entertainment on their show, their wacky fucking oh, mojo Christ. show. <sighs> well, E Rock, you know what to do. Oh. <laughs> Hey, yeah. This is Superman, Spidey Hulk. That's. You took three kind of superheroes. And... No, it's Superman, Spidey Hulk. Yeah, that's three superheroes. And I went together. to buy a shirt, and your car ran me over, jerky. That wouldn't have happened. It did happen. <laughs> yeah. just, that's just Everything the whole thing. ends with it did happen. It did happen. <laughs> I would listen to that every morning, Jim Norton. <laughs> every morning I would listen to that. Why not do that? Yeah. Go, all right, all these idiot radio stations are doing War of the Roses. Here's our version. Here's our version. Just completely goof on it. <clears throat> well, uh, sad to say, that pretty much ends um, the bulk of Jocktober. Tomorrow oh, we uh, look at ourselves. Yeah. Just to show everyone that we're just, just kind of having fun. Hi. Just having fun. We don't mean anything by it, guys. No, no, no harm. No harm. We we turn Why it around on ourselves. Why can't hang out with any radio person? Just about any. <sighs> we got a handful of people we like, but that's about it. Yeah. The rest of them are just fucking horseshit, Hi. and they do it to themselves. Yeah. And then wonder why they're not more popular or making more money or it's in terrible. a bigger fucking city, and it's right in front of their fucking eyes. Can you give us a hint at what tomorrow is? Not yet. Oh, no. For the people who don't know, it's going to be some audio me and Ant did a long, hopefully a long time ago. Jesus. At least admit that. No, it's How many the, years ago? It's a cereal break from early. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so could be, too. Yeah. Hey, we got someone on the phone who's got a brain teaser for us. Who's that? What's your name? Uh, How you doing, Craig? This is going to get confused with voices. <laughs> <laughs> it almost happened. No, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah? Who's buried in Grant's tomb? I don't know. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? That's a good question. Shinkle about it. All right, you shinkle about it, jerky. Oh, this is such a horrid exchange. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. It stinks. It's terrible. <laughs> Oh, it, brings, uh, it brings me such joy. <laughs> so, uh, tomorrow we'll look at ourselves. Yeah. Some horrendous yeah. audio that we did from hopefully uh, a long time ago, or it's going to be really awkward. Uh, going to take a break. Ian Halperin, Ooh. His Highness Hollywood, is next. Stay there. This is the Opie Anthony Show. Why do you look so evil today? Ian Halperin in studio. Oh, yeah. It's been a while. Ian undercover on the Twitter. He's I'm always on the case. In, in a while. You look uh, very sharp. Sharp dress, sir. You guys look a bit tired, but it's an honor to be here. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> good to have you. it's the morning uh, thing, you know. No, Norton looks great. Thank oh, you, Ian. You look like you've been hitting the gym. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen you. Yeah, yeah I you have, look I've fantastic. Been, uh, yes, he buddy. does. <laughs> look, i got to say one thing. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And to all the people, I get harassed by all your listeners what? to come back on this show all the time. So I'm here. And let's, 
let's the good times roll. Well, Ian, <laughs> obviously it's been a while. Just give us a little update. What have you been doing? What are you working on? In the last two years. You know, fill the the audience right. in on where you've been. I've been working on my tennis game a lot. Oh yeah, uh, playing yeah. a lot of tournaments. Um, what do you mean you're right. playing you're a like lot of pro tournaments. tennis player? Yeah, I'm we like to say tournaments in America, by the way. <laughs> tournaments, tourney, tournaments. Um, look, I, I ain't going to Wimbledon, but tennis is a way of life for me. I play about yeah. six times a week. Wow. And, uh, do you really? Yes, I do. Show me something. Um, Hey, the rat, the big rackets below the waist. So you know, I'm not uh, going to show you that. Yeah. Well, well, can't uh, you do like some air tennis? Yeah, no, to, I'm a lefty. Let us... me tell you something. What? I'm a lefty. Like Nadal John McEnroe. would not be Nadal if he wasn't a lefty. Mac, who I know was on the show recently, wouldn't oh, yeah. be Mac if he wasn't a lefty. We definitely have an advantage. You guys play tennis? Hell I no. Do. It's a no. girl sport. <sighs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to throw this at, at at you. Yeah. I've been talking to some pros. Remember, there's been some battle of the sexes. We had oh, Bobby Riggs against Billie Jean, which was rigged. They say we, that now. We yeah. started saying it was yeah. rigged. Writing a book about he lost it? it. He lost on purpose. We had... Because of gambling debts. Sorry. Jimmy beat Martina. Mm -hmm. When did that go down? That was the second battle of the sexes. Why doesn't anyone talk about the second battle of the sexes? And the third one, All His right. Highness <laughs> wants to organize. Yes. Oh, nice. And I'm proposing Serena Williams. Oh, See, boy. you always have a current player against a retired men's player. I'm, I'm proposing Serena against Pete Sampras, and I, I'm asking your callers who's going to win that one. Pete Sampras in his form today against Serena today. Who wins that? I would have to go with Serena. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I would have to go with Serena on that one. I would have to go with, I don't really give a fuck. But if you need an answer, Serena, sure. And Jim? Probably Serena. You find and, Serena attractive, see, all, right? We're always on a different page. I'm saying chicks. Sampras 6 love 6 1. Really? 6 love 6 1. Yeah, I, I think it's no contest. I, <laughs> 6 yeah. love 6 1. And I'll tell you why. You could take. How old is Sampras? Sampras, uh, I don't know, he's about 80 years old now. How old is the dude? No, I'm kidding. Right. He he's must probably, be about 42. I would guess around 42. It sounds about right. 41? Uh, yeah, he would kick her ass, I, I mean, guess, if you want to really think. Answer. Why, you why, could why? take the top. Because he's men's. probably still playing a lot. Yeah. Just to stay in shape and shit, right? Hmm. Let's see a picture of Pete Sampras. Let's see if he's got a little gut on him. But why would you put him, why would you have him beating her? Because he's only 41, 42. Like Bobby Riggs was what, 50 something? Yeah, uh, he was six old. or something. He was, old. he was a mess, yeah. And he, and it, oh, boy. He was post Viagra. What Bobby happened Riggs? to Sampras' nice hair? Wow. Damn. Looks like it ran away. <laughs> <laughs> You so know. how's life, guys? Uh, what, you what, what's going on? To, it looks like I haven't missed a beat here in two well, years. I haven't seen you guys. We, we asked you what, what you're doing, and you I said told you, you I'm play playing tennis. a lot of tennis. And, and right. he's got a bag a lot of, of books. Xbox. Why do you got a bag of books? Because nobody reads the books that comes in here from your publicists who bring on the guests. Right. They're just sitting in the office, so right. I grab them all. Yeah, they're right. collecting dust. Wait, I love to read. What I read about two, three books. Show us what you grab. Make a quick pile and find it. We have Pierce Morgan. Right. You know, all these guys seem to have a ghostwriter yeah. attached to these books. I yeah, mean, you write your own spooky. stuff. You know, uh, Tom Sizemore. Yeah. How, how, who's Am the I best I... one? George St. Pierre, fellow Canadian. I, I, I heard he's a bit of a dick, actually. Yeah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> how was he on the show here, St. Oh, I Pierre? missed that day. He's mellow. He's fine. We were to Rousey after him or before him. All right, and what else? Uh, this one, Cracked. Cracked Magazine. This is a lot of funny stuff in here. Cracked magazine. Yeah, they did a book. Now, Doctor J, I understand he's coming in. He's yeah, coming back, maybe yeah. tomorrow. I think. Is it tomorrow? Now, oh, apparently, so. he had a daughter. Or soon. When Play tennis. tennis. Yeah, that's right. I know a, that. A fantastic. And supposedly, she was pretty good. And they were estranged for years, and then uh, he he hooked up with her again, and he did the honorable thing and became a dad. Wait, when did this come yeah. in? If we have to read this for tomorrow. <laughs> when was the last time you read a book uh, for one of the guests? Oh, Seriously. Jimmy reads I, books. I read them. I you read, read them? Yeah, oh, yeah. Jimmy, uh, yes. Jimmy I'll, I'll does. I'll read what I can. Wait, like... is that the Dr. J book an old book? Dude, what type of diet are you on? You look fantastic. Oh look, God. what are you doing? He's amazing. I've just been eating blueberries. <laughs> this is Mr. Blueberry Face. What are you doing? The cold pressed Mustard. juice diet or no, something? No, I'm just eating. Uh, going to the gym and eating yeah. butter in yeah. general. Yeah. yeah. Which gym do you go to in New York? Give him a plug. Yeah, uh, no, in my building, let's just say. But I yeah. go to a separate gym. Are you doing yoga or something, too? No, no, just, just gym, cardio? 
Oh my a little God. cardio. I do usually four or five days in the gym with trainers a week. Because with all due respect, he looks in the best shape other the three of you. All right. Like, uh, yeah. with, Especially right. below the waist. He's you two working, look like uh, you haven't been in, hitting the gym recently. I hit the gym, sir. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck out of here. I'm that an was, animal. Look at Anthony's guns. That's true. I'm an animal. You're already aggravating the listeners. I can't wait to go to the phones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here but we hold go. on. What, what other books? You got the doctor. Paddle your own canoe. How was this, dude? Nick Offerman was really cool. He's the mustache guy from Parks and Rec. Yeah, right. He got a mustache. It looked all crazy. Who's been the best? Best guest you've had on in the two years since Ozzy Osbourne. No. <laughs> has Jesse Ventura been back? Uh, no. You know what? No, he hasn't been back in a while. Because that was a classic. He has Jimmy a... and Jesse Ventura. <laughs> he's one of the best uh, we've had on yeah, because I would he's have such to go an with... asshole. I would Tyson. Have... Yep. That was my answer, too. Mike, Mike Tyson, Tyson was oh, yeah? amazing. He's a nice guy. Although yeah. one of his uh, appearances was mellow. He's done three now. He's yeah. done two amazing and one just kind of mellow. And the day, the day he was mellow, mm -hmm. his wife was in studio. Yeah. So, there, you know, I see what's going on there. But he was mm -hmm. also, don't forget, still active in his addiction then, which he finally yeah. came out with. I can't wait to get his book and read oh, it, man. Oh, that's right. Oh, yes. I want to ask him about that. And what recently, man, Tim man. Conway is amazing. Yeah. Tim fucking Yesterday. Conway. I, I thought he was staring at wood, Tim Conway. Is he still around? Uh, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good name. Hey, this is Timmy Woodstarer. <laughs> <laughs> He's I'm 80. looking at Wood. He'll be 80 in December, and he was great on the show. He's going to be on our podcast next week. By the way, I should mention uh, this week it's uh, uh, Neil, Neil, DeGrasse. Neil DeGrasse, right? He was amazing. Neil DeGrasse Tyson. Another one. We figured out the fucking universe with this guy, and it's on our podcast that you could get today. So please go and do today. that. Today. The Opie and Anthony podcast comes today. out every Wednesday, and that's what you got this week. All right? And then people are requesting Conway already, so it'll be on next uh, Wednesday's yeah. podcast. Anyway, that's not important to Ian. Yeah, no. I, heard, I heard the show got very big since I've been gone. So Well, our show? Yeah. Huge. I think we have a, a few more uh, really? listeners. It depends yeah. who you talk to. I think we have a few more listeners. Yeah, some people in, think in we're the hizzy, failures, and others think we're oh, actually moving. True. Moving. Now, the from needle. what I hear, you guys have been making a lot of noise. And Word on seemed, the street. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right. I think you're street. bigger and better than before. Right. And now the show's gone completely well, downhill what? since I'm on. I was going to say, what, what's <laughs> the difference? And one is that you haven't been here in a while. <laughs> what about Sam over oh, here? I mean, God. young he, he Sam looks like Roberts. He, needs, he looks like he uh, just got circumcised or something. Well, that's so, probably, you know. Yeah, it looks like they cut He's a little bit a off ghost, man. Right. It's like, it's, yeah, he it looks like Schmeckle. Is it doesn't he, red looks meat. Like, <laughs> he looks like I'm on a funeral parlor <laughs> and, you know, the corpse is semi-alive. Like, no, I'm, dude, you, I'm, when I'm was the last time you took a vacation? That's probably the biggest change yeah. since you've been here our own sam roberts went from lowly you know a little office boy to now professional broadcaster that's got true. shows on all these channels well, he works hard he works, he works hard. hard which you know that kind of is the excuse for his uh so are you a millionaire? appearance do you have seven figures in the bank no i'm getting there that's I good I, he's married has a lovely wife seven beautiful wife you, don't, you only have seven <laughs> i'm working at five <laughs> Five's not bad. Five figures? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Not quite there yet. Ian, people... you think you'll ever be a superstar? Nope. Like Stern, like Opie and Anthony? I mean, Stern, Opie and Anthony, they're yeah. synonymous. They're radio legends. Oh, yeah. yeah. You should be kissing their feet every fucking time you come into the studio. Right. That's right. Your name ought to You're... be Tootsie Kisser. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I was playing tennis the other day, and ah, guess who's on the next court? Let no. me guess. Let me guess. Oh. A-Rod. Yeah, yeah guess. right next to me. And yeah. my perception of him changed. Why? I saw him with his daughters, mm -hmm. and Cynthia was there, too. Just the four of them. Who was yeah. with him? Cynthia oh, okay. and his two kids. Who's Cynthia? His ex? His ex. And he I gotta say, ex, kudos to A-Rod. Mm. I've never seen a guy better with kids. Yeah. He was fantastic. Hey, wait a minute. I fucking... Uh, <laughs> I'm good with him. The only time I ever played tennis is this fucking guy, Milos, and he made me... Who, he actually Canadian? No, it was a fucking Canadian some right? Russian guy. I think it was Russian. Okay. And, uh... He I'm wanted in. to impress his one. chick on the fucking court. So he, like, asked me, you know, Anthony, could you please, you know, make a, it look like I am good at tennis? But then as I helped him, the guy's bad-mouthing me. Like, oh, look at what the little girl. Look, you're going to cry, baby? So I just fucking, like, fucking yeah, never, power Never trust the gay Russian. Right down his fucking never. throat. No, no, no. He's never. trying to impress his chick. Send them back to Siberia. Give him a good lunch there. Chick. I could have fucked this chick. Well, Russian chicks are hot. <laughs> have you ever banged a Russian chick? Um, hmm. Let me see. Yeah, she's always in a hurry. Ah, <laughs> hey, Chippa. Yeah. Chippa, you Ian, focus. are the best. We got, a guy, we got a guy in the line that wants to ask you about something you said last time you were on our show. Oh. 
What? It's it's fair. You know, how can I remember that? I'm practically well, suffering from. Ian. Uh, Ian. Yes. Yes. Listen to Jason. Up there? From All Indy. Right. <laughs> Ian, I want to call you a name, but I really need the answer to this question, so I'm going to wait. So, last time you were on the show, you said there's some horrible disease sweeping Hollywood. It's worse than AIDS. It's going to start killing everybody. What the hell? I haven't heard one thing about this. Hollywood. <laughs> you haven't. Uh, actually, there was a disease sweeping Hollywood, sweeping parts of the U.S. Uh -oh. and then shortly happened? after. I guess they controlled it, but do Google it, man. Google ah, it. Google it. Listen, catch his own catchphrases. I like hearing get her done. Do, do, right. Google it. How, how have you been? Where how have going? you been? You sound more sexually frustrated, oh, shit. more depressed. You know, with all due respect when to I you. Google it. The only thing I find is Ian's a fucking mongoloid. Uh, you know what? <laughs> you should only live like this mongoloid one day exactly. of your life, and God bless. I wish you all the best. Sweeping Hollywood, you yeah. How are, how are things with the ladies? <laughs> They're always I good. like hearing about your sex ploits. Yeah. Well, no, there's no more sex ploits. I'm, what? A, I'm, a, oh, I'm, I'm practicing serial monogamy. You go gay? What I have, I have sex with cereal? All right, Chip. <laughs> oh, that yeah. is a good one, Chip. Hold on, Chip. Whoa, well, he's got a girlfriend. A you got a girlfriend? You have a Chick. girlfriend. Yeah, what's that about? Um, How long? She's a lawyer, and, uh, oh, a lawyer. you know, I'm very serious in uh, just leading a yeah. low-key life. You know, that's... You're not unco uncovering anything these days? Yeah, I'm working on a TV show. It's called House Guest. Uh, oh. Every week I stay with a different family. I just came back from England. I shot there. Uh, I stayed with a professional roller derby player. Her, yourself her husband, in there. <laughs> 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 Husband's a clinical psychologist, ah. and by the end of my stay, they split. Wow, so, what uh, happened? You fucking, she was like, uh, you, you can't fucking compete with, with his highness. Well, I'm no, dumping, I, I didn't I'm bang dumping. her. Again, no? I'm practicing serial monogamy these uh, days. Yes. Oh, but what are you dating like? I made uh, them realize they weren't something? compatible. We the first they time weren't there, compatible. <laughs> But tell me how the show goes down. You go yeah, yeah, with them happens? for how long? Uh, a week. I stay with them for a week. And then what do you do? A little uh, cameras are all over the place. So you yeah. work with the people. And I just infiltrate their out. zone. I, I, okay. I you Get know, I try space. to make them self-disclose, realize their purpose in life. Yeah. What are you like? A fucking life coach in there? Yeah. You know, I make. Uh -huh. a, I'm like Anthony Robbins on steroids. This could be your oh, first gotcha. good idea. I like this one. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. This is a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, and, and where do you sleep? Uh, I sleep in their house. Wait, yeah. Sam what? It, guest room. Sam. This says that it shot in February 2012. What? Well, we've been shooting. No, we started shooting. Oh, shit. And we've been shooting two years. Two years? So, two yeah. years. What fucking reality show? They, their turnaround is like a week on reality well, shows. Well, we do a lot of shows. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you want to you get like fucking yeah. eight seasons in the can before you roll out that first episode? No, we've been rolling out. All right. It's, okay. I'm when is going to hit uh, TV so we can watch this? Uh, it won't hit TV. We're doing our own channel. Oh, I got it. And you. it's going to be pay, pay what, as you go. What channel? Uh, His Highness YouTube? channel. <laughs> no, no YouTube. His Highness channel. My own channel. My own channel well, what's your own, own channel interviews. when you want to promote your own channel Sam, you don't, yeah. uh... <laughs> well i mean because the only thing is because you shot sure. in february 2012 right. and now that's the almost yeah we're pushing a year and two years nine months yeah, at least months. right yeah, yeah. nine months we're still shooting like the, still shooting and it's going to be on your own channel but yes. you don't really want to promote it even though we're big i radio will promote stars. it when we're ready to roll out is we're not ready is there a possibility that you shot it in february 2012 and then things didn't really happen with it, and it's actually not going to happen? No, no. Oh, you know, when I do something, uh, Roberts, unlike yourself, with okay. all due respect, <laughs> all right, I do it to you. the max. Oh. I don't do anything oh. second rate. Oh, I do no. it to the best I can and top notch. Our oh. phones went oh, out, and yeah. we need our phones for the E. Oh, my oh, God. Are second rate. All right, they might be back. Yeah, yeah. No, you sorry. don't do anything second rate, no. No. no what book are you working on? Anything? Uh, yeah, it's a book about uh, hockey players, and oh. it's called Dirty Play. Oh, cool. And I've interviewed... Several make... hundred people for this. And <laughs> How do you interview several interviews. hundred people? We've been on for years that we haven't interviewed <laughs> several hundred. Well, you know, I have a... It's amazing. Whatever happened hard. to your Lady Gaga project? That oh, did well. Shit. That rolled out. That did very well. Yeah. Sold all could over the world. Could you look up the Lady Gaga Chasing project? Chasing Gaga. Chasing Gaga. Okay, here's a Chasing Gaga watch party. Oh, it aired on the TV Guide channel. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. is there, a, like, a trailer or a clip we can play? Yeah, play a clip. Yeah, okay. Chasing okay. Gaga. I would like to see some of And now you're going with the hockey player. Hockey's big in Canada, my friend. I don't you think I got to tell you. You would it have is. been able to interview hundreds of people if you did it to the max. Good point. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what did a Frank and a Bill get? Do you ever, uh, you know, do you Robert, ever... Robert's, you know, for a guy with a small dick, you certainly have a big Whoa. dick. Whoa. <laughs> Seriously. You ever relax in or are you compliment. always working? What do you no, do? I'm not always working. You're, I'm you're, very selective in what I get involved in. You kick back? And, uh, absolutely. What do you do? Where do you go? Where do you go to relax? What do you do? I play tennis. Yeah, but you mean tennis you is my yoga. Is it? Some guys do yoga. Okay. Not yeah. only a master songwriter and keyboard hey. player, Gaga has staged some of the most significant and entertaining you? shows in the history of music. Of course, it is. Music. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Ian Halper, an award-winning celebrity journalist and author. Oh, you shouldn't say that about I've yourself. Hollywood's biggest stars, including Michael Jackson, Princess Diana, and Elizabeth Taylor, but few of them have the meteoric rise of Lady Gaga. I interviewed many like of the key people close vulture. to Gaga <laughs> since her career took off to get the story. All right, this seems oh, like. I like it. It's legit. legit. Yeah, it we did well. They didn't play it in America, but it did play in America. Really we a, got a you don't need a market like America. I can get that somewhere. We right? sold it all over the world. Oh, it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, watch you on YouTube. You know what I love? Title. I love that goddamn Apple TV. I put stuff on YouTube it on my good. phone, and then I just go, Apple TV, and there it is on my 90-inch fucking TV in my goddamn <laughs> fucking nice. living room. I'm watching anything. It's fantastic. You know? Like a movie screen. Yeah, wow. it's great. Exactly. There. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, Jimmy will not let it go. You know, Anthony, I, I agree with you on all this because we're not at the mercy of all the big corporations anymore. You know we what? can take it into Bingo. our own hands and make money. Last night, a uh, little story. I want to watch uh, Gladiator. <laughs> out of nowhere, I just, you know, I like that movie. I think it's one of the few uh, perfect movies out there. There's not one moment that's bad in that goddamn movie. So I wanted to watch it. So I, I, I go to On Demand. I get it. And then I realize when they come out and that guy's swinging whoosh, whoosh, the mace around and he smacks that guy in the head and his teeth and blood go flying. No teeth, no blood. What? Like, what the fuck? They took that out of the movie? So I look and it says, Gladiator remastered. Oh, I don't know what the fuck that means. And it's On Demand. So it's fucking remastered. So I'm like, son of a bitch. Netflix. Bam. Nothing. Nothing Why there. Why do they do that? I go, I'm, I'm searching all over the place. Then I finally found a DVD in my house. The, the moral of the story is... You don't have to put up with the man anymore. You know, I don't have to. Wow, put, I don't know why annoying. they did that. And I noticed right away. I'm like, I remember that. It was right after the guy pisses his fucking pants, and the door opens, and the guy gets smacked in the head with right. the fucking mace. You and, know what? And they cut out the fucking blood in Gladiator. It's the whole point. You know what, man? All of us are thinking right. of, thinking mm -hmm. about throwing our yeah, DVDs away. You. Yep. yep. You got to keep the DVDs. You never know because they're gonna remaster all this shit. Yeah. yeah. Don't want Eventually. Yep. So keep your DVDs if you want to see the original version of the movie. And, and of course, I had three Crazy, giant stacks that. of DVDs in the plastic cases. Right. Where do you think Gladiator was? The bottom of the last one I fucking <laughs> checked. Right? Always the case. I'm fucking tooling through. There's the Matrix. There's fucking Terminator. Right. There's Alien. I'm fucking flipping discs all over the I place. Don't, I don't know why you... Little, ba little Beavis is batting them around the house. <laughs> like, knock it off. Here's my vocabulary, by the way, uh, uh, when I'm home alone. No, Beavis, no! Beavis, get down! Be Ow! Ow! It's no, not, Beavis! No, stop it! It's not as fun. I am it's, yelling it's not constantly as fun anymore, huh? at my little cat. The terrible twos for your fucking kitten oh. already. Right, Ian knows. Terrible twos, yeah. right, Ian? Oh, yep. He does it. From 2 to 17, right? And he well, you know what? I, I think the, f the first four years are tough because the kids are falling all over the place. You get oh, all nervous. After muscular four, dystrophy is a bitch. It's a yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Put stuff in their milk, make some tired. How was Montreal, oh, Anthony? I know you were up in Montreal. I enjoyed <laughs> I heard you were a big hit there. You hosted a gala, and uh, hey, it they was loved a lot. you. It was so much fun, and the people up there were uh, wonderful. It's delightful. The city. Is great. It's hot on the streets. It's clean. Yeah. There's Power no you go. gibberish. You're no right. gibberish on so the street fan. corners. Mean it's French and English. Big it's fan. It's I don't mean that. Oh. It's speaking both languages, very proper. Not like fucking here. Walk Did they down treat the you well? They like fucking gold. Mm -hmm. Please, thank you. As the bartenders really? were fucking courteous. Oh, appreciative. I loved it. And the I checks? gotta tell you. How were the chicks? Smoking hot, Ian Halperin. <laughs> Smoking hot, yep. Canadian broads. <laughs> Canadian, yep. They, yep. they are. They love are. Love it. You're not going to get any complaints. So you're going to go back me. next summer. I would love to go back next summer. Uh, yeah, you for, guys are big that. in Canada. I know we are. Huge. I love it. We know. That's why we went. I mean, we're I go people are beating now. down doors to get into the show. Ian, we got to go to the phones. Yes. Um,
Let's say hi to Michael in Manhattan. Oh, no, no, no more guys. No more guys, because all the, the guys, I, I need <laughs> they're women. They're just haters. Women. They're no jealous. more guys. Sorry, jealous guys. Jealous haters, Ian. Yeah. Uh, the phones aren't working. Remember what? when I said that a little while ago? Oh, Mars still, is right on it. They're still not working. Oh, that's right. I haven't seen Hey, them. Ian, why are you here today? I'm confused. <laughs> I oh. have to say hi to you guys. I'm in town <laughs> shooting an episode of House Guest, and uh, oh. I have to come say hi to you guys. An another episode of House ah. Guest. Ah. How many seasons do you have in the in the can? I'm going to do about 15 episodes, <laughs> and it's pay as you go, and that's it. Nice. What? You know, and, should, and ah. no checks made out to Sam Roberts. I Maybe mean, we should he, go he's that making route. a lot of paper. He, you know, yeah. if Sam Roberts was homeless, I'd probably uh, pass him by. Not you know, with all due oh, respect. Why, why is that? It, because, dude, you look like a corpse. You oh. need to get yeah, a tan. Yeah, but if I was homeless, that wouldn't be you, that. You look weird. miserable, bro. Miserable I since I've seen you last time. Day. How's I marriage? I see here. a ring is still on your finger. Uh, Mazel yeah. Marriage is good. It's good. Yeah, marriage. Did is good. you, did you bang her last league. night? I, I did, as a matter of fact. Yeah. He yes, married so far out of his league. It's ridiculous. That's Volker. Talk, his right. wife is very cute. I'm very excited nice. that I'm going to see Jess Show this uh, Friday Mazel at Thank my you. big Halloween gala. Yeah. Hopefully she dresses up. Hopefully she dresses up as a woman who murdered her husband. <laughs> Are you coming to Ann's party on Friday? Yeah, you're invited. Oh, yeah. in, in town. Ah. In town. Yeah. ah, shit, I was going to invite you. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Michael in Manhattan yeah. wants to say something to, Mike? to Ian Halpern. Hey, uh, Ian, you fucking moron. Oh, man, <laughs> that's... With all due respect. I mean, you're like a human parrot. That's all you said. <laughs> so okay. Why is that? Why they... Yeah, what? Was, was what? it always why like this? Why all the testosterone? Why all the jealousy, I, the I hatred? I it's a beautiful coming. day in New York. Nothing, man. Yeah. Dude, had, I'm not asking for your approval. <laughs> you know, the only approval I need is for my own family, dude. You're not mishpucha. You know, what is it? Like, don't give me the Yiddish. The Yiddish is crap. Are you, are you an anti Semite? <laughs> yeah. I'm the anti Semite. Bullshit. You don't like Jews, right? Dude, let, let me explain something to you. Would you bang Al Sharpton? You're the type of creep to grease yourself up, okay? Jerk off into a fucking mirror. Dude, I ain't jerking off. Like dude, like get a life, you miserable Thursday, zero. Right. You're a zero, dude. You're still doing the same fucking bullshit two years later. Uh, get a life. What are you doing with your life, you mooch? <laughs> Showtime. Come on, get him off the line. Get him off. He's a mooch. He's a zero. Enough for him. Let me tell you something. I'm sorry, Mike. I know Ian hasn't been here in a while, but I don't recall. Were the callers always like this? No, they usually Were are they pretty in? nice. I get all these tweets. Please come back on the show. Come back on the show. So I'm back. But what a homecoming. You know, I, I, I don't lose Everyone sleep. Everyone that wants you back, and that's the millions of people. Mm. Yeah. They're just listening and enjoying at home. That's it. You're the haters, it. which is just a, a small portion of the well, audience. It's a vocal minority. Is they're the is. one calling. And he's rocking right. the frosted hair, I see. Yeah, I see that. Looks good. You're making it work, it's Ian. It's pretty yeah. good. Making it yeah. work. It's all showbiz. It's showtime. It's all showbiz. Yeah. Yeah. I, Ian I looks wanted showbiz. to be a cross between uh, yourself and Anthony. Oh, Thank you. We got Tim in New York. I'm going to prove that the, you know, the, the listeners right. are could be not kind decided. To right, of course not. Tim, go ahead. Hey, I was wondering if Ian's show is actually called Bathhouse Guest. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you know what he's talking uh, about, right? Your jokes are so old. I was surprised uh, by that so one. so old. Get, at least give fresh, good jokes. Right. You know I mean? Gay men yeah, go to bathhouses. The bath guy who harps off the corpses of Michael Jackson, Liz Taylor, and Princess Di. Oh, oh, I love Liz I Taylor. I love Liz Taylor. May she rest in peace. Would you do her? Yeah, uh, yes. In, in, in her the current, current state? state? Absolutely. Okay. Current state. <laughs> All right. I, can, I, I, can I, would, I wouldn't do Conrad Murray. I'm really upset that he's out of jail. Uh, oh he, yes, he got off two years early. I, he, that I think is, he, he got out. I think he banged somebody in the prison and they let him out early. Oh, I mean, I can't think. <laughs> there's no other reason for this dude to get out so early. Did you hear his crying and tapes? I, I, his uh, voicemails, or he's crying yeah, and leaving yeah. people voicemails, and then it seems like he just went in. And now he's out. I'm yeah. sure it probably seemed longer for him than it did for us here on the outside, not paying attention Considering to him. Considering he killed the King of Pop, I think it's reasonable yeah. to do two right, years. Right, right, right. Exactly. Two years. Wow. Killing, yeah, you know. What the hell is that about? It doesn't make sense. Let's say hi to musician. Doug in Boston. He's a regular. I'm sure he'll treat you with some respect. Doug, hey! Go ahead, Doug. Hey, listen, I, I don't have a problem with Ian. I don't even know him. But uh, we do have a mutual friend who I called him earlier to say, hey, Ian's going to be on uh, O&A. Uh -oh. And he's like, well, here, you got to bring this up, okay? you got to ask Ian about his friend Stick, who lives in Montreal, who has a book called My Dirty Clothes. And apparently the story is, Ian decided to 
register the donate domain name My Dirty Clothes behind his friend's back. Oh, yeah, that's, what you're sounds... saying is libelous, Ooh. what's false, <laughs> and uh, get a life, dude. Don't make false uh, accusations because I, you might have His Highness's lawyers taking away your home. Oh shit, that sounds uh, like a well, juicy piece I got of gossip. One more thing, too. Okay, so Mark. Oh, I'm sorry. My friend also says that. Um, Ian has a thing for Russian hookers, and most oh. of the money from his Michael Jackson book oh. was spent on Russian hookers. Ian, comment. Uh, Ian? Get Ian? this guy's number, and I'll have my lawyers contact oh, him. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. shit. Yeah, this is... Uh, you know, you can't make statements like that. And, you know, it's all jealousy and... Uh, you do love the Russian chicks, though. Although, to pump up Russian the Russian economy... You did kind of implicate yourself by that whole Russian yeah. thing we yeah, mentioned before. And then he before. just picked up on it, and, you know, it's I mean, easy to make that That is true. That is yeah. true. You know. All right. Yes, yes. Let me try another one here. Vinny and Staten Island, another regular hey, to the yeah. show. Vinny. Gentlemen, uh, earlier in the week we talked... Fuck Lou Reed, fuck huh? Radiohead, yeah. fuck Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and most importantly, fuck you, Ian Alfred. Oh, <laughs> wow, man. you're being lucky. Ian, great you're in people great there. company right there. Uh, he put you in. Hey, I don't Lou know if Reed, that was a compliment. That's a big loss, and uh, may he rest uh, in peace. Why is I was a big Velvet Underground fan, and I was very upset to hear about Lou Reed's name. Uh, you're a big fan? Uh, huge. Uh, I think Lou Reed really yeah. reinvented. The dirty Boulevard, we're going down. It's nice, to right? The dirty Boulevard, we're going. <laughs> so dirt. What a voice on That's him! Right. Was Lou Ian, ever on the show? Um, no, no. But he Ian, you, you're show. a singer. Yeah, I've heard you croon. Yeah, before. Well, can we hear him croon? Um, I don't know. Can we? Um, you've, you've, uh, you're a songster. Just to prove that you're a crooner before Ann makes his point. But uh, I, I've, I've heard. I'll, him I'll sing. sing you one of mine. Okay. Oh. All right. Going low, going high, and I'm feeling so nice. I'm driving in the Norway road. There you go. That it's right good. on key. Uh, now, you got a guy like Lou Reed who gets all these accolades. The guy couldn't sing a note. Let's be it, real yeah, but, here. So, you know, there are Rod Stewart, uh, Leonard Cohn, uh, Bob Dylan, but these guys are I don't are mean the raspy icons. throat yeah. thing. You know, yeah. you listen to Rod Stewart, he's hitting the notes that he's supposed yeah. to hit yeah. when he sings. Lou Reed True. is just kind of talking his way through these. And if you listen to a lot of his songs, they don't even rhyme. Yeah. Fucking, he's just babbling and talking. Making a song rhyme is a talent. You but know? that's what gives him his own voice, with uh, all due respect. Look, uh, I will never mm -hmm. denigrate another artist in any shape or form you uh -huh. could fart in a cd put it out okay i'm not going to trash him what do I, I i say put it all out there let the people judge but i admire anybody true with artist. the courage to express themselves Very good. Let's you're, go a, to, you're a humble man let's go to garrett in philly garrett ian you're a fraud and oh. i have proof of it Ooh, yeah right be so careful actually, man he's got powerful lawyers fucking lawyers will be right on there that's right ian, i have a video slap an injunction you. on him yes Listen, I have a video of you on my cell phone of you crying at JFK International Airport two weeks ago outside the Burger King. Do you recall this? Is that true, Ian? You were crying outside of Burger King? What, what did they get your order right, wrong? Let's go to the next caller because, uh -oh. you know, <laughs> what get, are we going to do Did here, they get your you order know? wrong? Why, yeah. would, they, what's, what's why would you what's be he, crying outside he, of Burger King? Yeah, what's he talking about? They didn't have the healthy fries? Phone. You were on the phone. He was on the phone when he was crying. I had a video. Yeah. Well, what was it about? Was it, maybe it was a personal issue. You're right, Ian. I'm fine. Do, do, <laughs> did they not hold the pickle yeah. or the lettuce? All right, let's move on because you know <laughs> special I, I, orders. You're supposed to be come on, let's have some substance and them. let's have right. some fun. <laughs> Ian, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, why were you crying? What was what was the matter? I mean, I've cried. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to. I'm I'm just not going to give uh -oh. any buy into any of this. They so. didn't give you a cardboard yeah. crown. Yeah. Email the video to you guys. What email address should I send? Yeah, please email it. You got video. Yeah, I will email it to you guys. Please was do. It, was it bawling, pissy-eyed crying, or just a little weepy? Yeah, that's it good. Was, it was weepy, but he, he definitely was not okay. That's What's your email, Sam? I mean, I think this guy's lying. I don't believe him. Uh-oh, Ian. What uh, happened? You can send it to opianthony at SiriusXM.com. Why didn't you go up to him and go, hey, you're Ian Halpern? Because he was literally a mess, and he's a creep. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Story it's checks a out. creep. <laughs> All right. He's going to mail that in. Let me say hi to Steve in Montreal. You were just ah, talking about Montreal. Here you this go. Is Great city. A fellow Canadian, nice. Great a brother city. of country. Good morning, Steve. So how are you guys doing? All right. Steve A. Hey, Ian, I got a question for you. You uh, intended a lawsuit against Guy Lesage <laughs> a couple years back for his uh, on his show that you were on 
tout le monde en parle. Yeah. I was curious to find out what happened with that. And by the way, you are rock to him. You know, did you have an actual I'm lawsuit? not going to comment uh, on anything legal. Uh, what I will say, I went on the show. Yep. And uh, gonna, what, what show are you? I, don't even, I didn't hear what he said. It's a, it's a show up in Canada called Tout le monde en parle. Okay. What does that so, mean? So uh, everybody speaks. You speak French? Uh, Dumb oui, je parle français. Est-ce que okay. tu parles français, toi? Ciel, a vavle sous or something. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not going to talk about it. I, I respect Guillaume Lepage. It wasn't about him. It was about another guy on the show. And we settled it, and that's it. Game over. And I, I'm not going to talk about anything. What was the issue anything. at, at yeah, what did the guy do? Um, you don't have to, like, There were some the um, details, remarks but. made about... Uh, I was on the show the day of Yom HaShoah, which is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Oh, shit. And my father is a Holocaust survivor. Oh, man. For real. And there were some anti-Jewish remarks made. I've got a grandfather that died in a concentration camp. Don't say it. He <laughs> fell out of the guard tower. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> See, oh he, was, he was a Nazi. It's a guard that was there to protect the, the other Nazis. And, you yeah, know, right, Ian? May he rest in peace. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 so what happened with this Holocaust Day? Well, there were some uh, derogatory statements made, but we settled it, so I'm not uh -oh. going to comment on it. No, yeah. on his part, obviously. Yeah. All right, we got He's probably not as sympathetic to the Jewish cause as uh, an Ian Halperin would be. We got Anthony's a brother. A fellow member of the tribe. Anthony's brother? Uh, yes, Joe. What's up, guys? How Joe, are you? For real, this what's is Joe. Up? Um, uh, yeah, I just have two things to, I have two things to plug. Oh, now. my I God. We're in the middle of... Question. No, come on. I, I never call in for plugs. But uh, the first thing is Hagerstown, Maryland, to you at the Hagerstown uh, Theater. In Mar the Maryland Theater in Hagerstown. <laughs> You didn't hang up on me. I know you Ouch. didn't hang up on me. No, I'm, I'm car crashing you because we're in the middle of a, a fine interview with Ian Halpern. I have a question. I have a question for Ian. I just wanted to plug a couple oh, of things. Oh, okay. Well, all right. And the, uh, and, and the other thing was uh, fundanything.com, Penn Gillette, his movie director's cut. I know he's coming on the show soon. Mm. I just wanted to uh, mention the fact that I uh, turned in a couple of uh, song possibilities for the soundtrack. <laughs> 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 up on YouTube. And, uh, Ian, who are you and what do you do? Oh, no. Uh, I'm a, I'm a re I used to be a regular on the O&A show. <laughs> and uh, I've had a two-year hiatus. And I'm back on the show. I'm a big fan of these guys. Thank you, Ian. We're big fans of you. You know that. Absolutely. It's All great right. to be here. Great uh, to see you guys. Yes. I have a lot of respect. This is a different Ian Halperin. Uh, well, it's a little it, more subdued. It is. He's a taken man. A little man. more subdued. I like the wild party guy who comes in those here with days the are gone. You know, Remember when you came in with those chicks? Remember the chicks that you rented for the day? Uh, Craigslist, you know. They, <laughs> I could have got better models uh, probably on the corner of uh, Broadway and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and those. 42nd. <laughs> but you know what? You had them. They were up here. They were yeah. here. Like, let me tell you something. A friend of mine went on Arsenio Hall two weeks ago. Okay. And some comedian brought her on. She was paid as a member of the audience to pop out. So, oh, shit. So, I, you know, they either stole from me or I stole from them. Wow. But, uh, will Arsenio last this time around? No. Yeah, it doesn't no? seem like anyone's talking about no, it. No. There's I don't even know what the ratings are. Zero about. heat. He seems to do very well at first because I like a lot lately talk show. The yeah, there doesn't seem to be anybody watching. Just no talking water over him now. So is he here for a cup of coffee? And um, a cup of fun. yeah, he's and and what he's doing, it's exactly the same thing he was doing in the '90s. So he's not even he hasn't changed anything. He hasn't updated it. And and the the only thing is he's a little more out of touch now than he was. Um, you know, when he was a hip, uh, hip I don't know black anybody's, guy. I don't, I don't, honestly don't hear people talking about it. None. I, I don't know. If he, he might be doing well in the ratings. I just don't know. I don't think he is. I watched uh, Pete Holmes' new show. How yeah. was that? I liked it. Pete the Wad Holmes? Pete Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, I think that's a he's good follow-up to Conan. He, yeah, yeah, he's on after yeah. Conan on TBS. They I think had their first well. show the other day. You know who's writing for that show? Joey. Joe DeRosa. Joey D. So, sorry, Pete. Oh, what, what happened? I'm saying because Joe's writing for him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the Wolverine sketch he did to start it all off was pretty good. Very clever. Yeah, well yeah. written. Yeah, I liked it. Very nice. So far, so good for Pete Holmes. Was it a half hour or an hour? Half hour. Oh, I have it. Thanks. Is it a half hour? I think it is. Wow, oh, that went by. Uh... And how's Fallon going to do in New York? Well, we love the Fallon. Oh, they're great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, him and oh, Kimmel yeah. are great with, with like uh, social media and with, with, with what's current and in the pop culture. They're yep. both really good with that, so I think we're fine. Are you going to be a regular on his show? If you've had me, of course. I've done Fallon before. Yeah. It's great. 
Yeah, I think we're Team Fallon on this one. Mm-hmm. Although they're yeah, both, I think he'll do well. Although think, they're uh, both very good. I'm not trashing uh, Kimmel. But yeah, I'll do his show Fallon's too. been very cool to us over the years. I think it's a good move to move the show here. Mm-hmm. Well, it's hard to say Back because to it's good York. for Kimmel because he'll be the only L.A. guy at 1130. Was Jay's going off the air and fucking, um, you know, with, with, with Fallon staying here, Kimmel's got the L.A. thing sewn up. And that's why Carson eventually moved. Move to LA. Yeah, I wonder how it'll affect guests. He'll get great ones in New York. Maybe they figure there's more New York guys, but I think uh, you're going to get Kimmel getting more first movie stars because of where he is. Mm -hmm. But do you think there's room for all these guys late night? It seems there's way too many right now. Bit crowded. Bit crowded. We haven't even we haven't even talked about Chelsea Handler. I mean, all these people are coming out with late night shows, and I think some of them are going to have to disappear. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the amount of channels that there are these days, and, uh, you know, you can pop shows on everywhere. They aren't expecting huge runaway numbers anymore because the audiences are so divided. Yeah, if you could be, you know, the big fish in the smaller pond, eh, then you're you're eking out an existence. You know, I think Pete Holmes will do pretty good. Mm -hmm. What about Ferguson? Huh? The the brother from fucking Clarissa explains it all. Yeah, Ferg I don't know where he is. I mean, somebody has to take a hike here. I, I, I like Ferguson, but I don't watch him. Yeah, but when yeah. I end up watching him, I do enjoy what he does. If that makes any. Who's the sense. best out of all of them? Which Ferguson do you mean? I think um, I think Letterman. Turd, yes, Turd Ferguson. I still I still like Letterman yeah. above them all. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. You do. A hundred percent. Wow. I think Letterman's Letterman, looking a little old on the TV. Letterman's still, in a league of his own. Still does. I it. was there the day Julianne Moore opened up for you guys. When you guys oh. were on that show, I was in the audience. You weren't in the audience. Yes, I was. Oh, wait, I think we talked about it. I was. Julianna Moore was the first guest, and, and you guys were second. Oh. You guys had more fans than her. Julianna Outside the studio, Moore. by the, the, the side, there were so many O&A fans. One and oh. done for us. I was there with my buddy David Gavrilchuk. Oh. He flew into New York, and Did we, you sue we got him tickets too? to Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're not going to sue us, are you? No, nah, you guys are, right, you guys are uh, sue-proof. Well, you know, I wouldn't want to mess with your lawyer. Well, you guys look, are nice look at guys. what we did to the last guy that sued us. We set him up as a pedophile going after a seven-year-old. <laughs> oh, only took ten years, but we did it. We, we got, him. got him. We got him. We got him back. Surprised the shit That's... out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck with us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you hear about that, Dave Herman? Rock and Roll Morning Show from WNEW? I never heard about that, but yeah, that's a good one. They spent a year uh, doing an investigation on him. Uh, it turns out he was soliciting sex from a mother for uh, uh, sexual um, uh, services of her six-year-old daughter. At the time. At the I time. They and threw him away the key. It took him a year, but he finally... How are they going to lock the cell? ...was going to get it done. And, oh, after that. Okay. And she was seven when uh, she was going yeah. to fly this fake caught, person. They, and they caught him waiting kid. for wow. this plane to come in with this um, you know, imaginary mother and daughter, but he thought they were real, in St. Croix. Because he's got a house down there. So the police went into the airport while, where he was waiting, and they got him sitting there in the chair in the terminal with a stuffed animal on his lap. Poor guy. He's waiting for this fucking kid to come. What a piece of shit. That's like what? being in a restaurant and you're ready for your steak, <laughs> and instead they come over with handcuffs. <laughs> that ain't right. Oh, Uncle Paul. You're a despicable man. He had to pay for parking and everything and I buy bet. the doll. That's long-term parking. Maybe they, let what Conrad, a lie. maybe they let Conrad Murray out so he could check in. Hey, there you go. Make some cell space for that motherfucker. That's a lie. I hear you. What's, um... I gotta go. What? I got my one-on-one. Oh, my God, what, what, What's your schedule today? I got my one-on-one. I didn't even notice what time it was. Uh, Tim Sabian. He's, hey, try, he's trying to do one-on-ones or something. And let me thing. thank you guys. It's been nice hey, to and see Halperin. you guys again. What a, what a and, pleasure. Um, Please, uh, don't make yourself a stranger yeah, thank you very as long much. as you have. And, uh, I'm a big fan of the show. Uh, I could yeah. tell you, you mentioned a few things. That, yeah, uh, a huge yeah. fan. You guys are legends. Legends. Legends in the radio world, for wow. sure. And uh, you got the right man over here hitting cleanups. Oh, thank please. You. Jimmy Norton, in shape, looking good. And I fucking... have so many friends in Canada who are fans of these. this guy. Oh, yeah. So he's like a rock star up there. Anywhere. Here. Ian is forgetting, too, the important thing that you didn't mention. Oh, uh, about the Beacon Friday night. Oh, my yep. God. How I will be there with ADC. Um, ADC. I'm, I'm also going to oh. be in uh, Albany sometime in November. Albany. Yes. Yeah. 
And I'm looking. And my advice show I'll be doing next week. I oh. owe a couple of advice shows because I shot last week and I'm shooting this week. But uh, uh, I will make up the couple of shows that I missed uh, over the next couple of weeks. I'll be doing two a week just to cover the the ground. You're working for advice now? No, I'm doing oh, advice. Okay, advice show here I do on Wednesdays. Awesome. People I'm call up things. and they say, Jimmy, yeah, uh, I want to fuck this broad, and he goes tells you you know how to do it, or or Jimmy, uh, I drink too much, and he tells you what to do. I suggest. Or Jimmy, my wife wants to have sex with a giant black cock. Yes. And I want to watch. And I tell you where to find one. And then he yeah. <laughs> yes. But, but I'm not giving up the advice show. It's just no. my shoot schedule has been a little crazy. The last couple weeks. No worries. Uh, also, the Opie and Anthony podcast. Uh, the latest one is out today. Indeed, he do. Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson, as we figure out the universe, and I think we did. I think we figured it all out. And I'd like to invite His Highness Ian Halperin to stick around and do after Whoa. Opie and Anthony. Oh, wow. Wow. wow! That right no, there is fantastic. Wow! That right that's there is like. Remember when Carson used to wave a comic over after he did a, a stand-up set? Yeah. Like he thought he was just going to do stand-up and go back backstage again. And Carson waves him over and sits down with very funny stuff, funny stuff. <laughs> he, he, that is exactly what the after show is. That's right. It's going to be fun. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's the equivalent of fucking Mengele waving you over for a, <laughs> oh, a twin test. Oh, yeah. Thumbs down on the boxcar. It would be my honor, <laughs> sir, if you would oh. do my live read today. Absolutely. You, you <laughs> sure? Jesus Christ. You sure? <laughs> it would be my honor. He's pawning okay. it off. Is that cool? Anything for you, Opie. It's right. called pawning it I off. I would be honored. Anything for Opie. Oh, I'm not trying to get out of anything. It would just be my honor. I'd like to be honored. <laughs> Here comes the light of the day. Light of the day. Light of the day. Shake those conundrums. No. What word of the English language is always spelled incorrectly? Shake about it.